From Bellhaven Bulls Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, it's the Bellhaven Blazers against the Southwestern Pirates, game number five of the season. A very pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Garrett Green with you here on SHN Sports, joined by Andrew Chapman. We are your broadcast crew for today, bringing you this game for Southwestern and ASC play. The Pirates coming into today at 2-2 two and two on the season. They are 1-2 and two in conference play. As for Bellhaven, the Blazers, they come into this game at 1-4. and four. They are 1-1. One and one in conference play. Andrew, we take a look at the Southwestern Pirates offense. We've heard Coach Joe Austin talk about it. Certainly one of the things that has stood out has been the injury to the quarterback position. We saw it last week, uh, and now they will try and turn a new leaf, and really it looks like uh, they've got good news with Coleman Kerr coming back. Yeah, they did just prior to this game. The news that Coleman Kerr is back under center. He's going to be man in this offense today and trying to lead them against a difficult Bellhaven defense, who at points this year has really shut down opposing offenses combined over the last couple of weeks Southwestern with just nine combined points but let's see if Coleman Kerr can try and turn the table this week around not only is he a guy who can air it out and try and take advantage of this man coverage that Bellhaven plays but he also can extend plays with his legs a guy who's willing to try and rush the, uh, get out of the pocket and try and pick up some yards with those legs should also see Hank Moore who came in and played in last week's game so we'll expect a little bit of a split that's going to be as this game develops meanwhile on the other side of things very briefly for Bellhaven they get Hunter McKee churn back a uh, great starting quarterback for them he missed last week's game but he is back the Pirates have seen him once before and really a guy who is one of the most proficient passers in the ASC yeah a guy who's completing just shy of 54 percent of his passes this year and even though he missed last week he's just shy of the thousand yard mark already on the season 862 passing yards coming into this game he's also a guy who can extend plays with his legs 29 times he's rushed the ball this year out of the uh, the quarterback spot four TDs, couple of interceptions. Let's see if that pass rush from Southwestern can try and put some pressure on McEachern today and make him throw, throw it often. For Bellhaven, they've only had one game this year where they've scored more than 17 points. That was a big game against McMurray. It's their lone win of the season, but they will try and get back in the win column coming up today. Southwestern looking to snap a small two-game skid as they go up against Bellhaven here in Jackson, Mississippi today. When we come back on the other side, we'll take a look at keys to the game. Plus, we'll get the thoughts of the head coach, Joe Austin, Leading up to this matchup, it's the Pirates and the Blazers. And it comes your way on SHN Sports in just a moment. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium here on the campus of Bellhaven in Jackson, Mississippi, the capital of the state of Mississippi. Gary Green with you here. Andrew Chapman is alongside. Uh, Andrew, we'll hear from Coach Joe Austin coming up here in just a few moments, but uh, looking today for Bellhaven and for Southwestern, let's start with the Pirates. What are the keys today if the Pirates want to be successful against Bellhaven? Well, there's a couple of key, uh, big keys in this one, Garrett, and first and foremost, it's trying to take advantage of that Bellhaven man coverage and try and air the ball out a little more. Southwestern, we mentioned Coleman Kerr, his addition back into the offense. He has the ability to extend plays with his legs, but let's see if he can try and air out a couple of deep balls and get it over the top of that Bellhaven coverage today. On top of that, try and win the special teams battle. If you can pick up a couple of scores on special teams, that's going to help out the offense. Also on the defensive end, try and win the turnover battle as well. Give your offense a short field to work with. That'll benefit Coleman Kerr in the long run. Meanwhile, on the other side of things for Bellhaven, uh, a team that's 1-4 and four, but has played folks very close today. Case for them that the Pirates are going to look to shut down. Well, it all comes down to really pressuring that quarterback, Hunter McEacher, and he's going to try and be the, the big leader on this field from both sides. And, and overall, if, if he's continuously able to get that passing game going early and he's able to get those deep balls, Southwestern can run into some problems, get pressure on the quarterback quickly, 
four-man rush, five-man rush, whatever you have to do, make him unstable in the pocket. Well, we'll see what they're able to do today, but that's just our thoughts on it. But for the thoughts on what's actually going to happen today, let's go to Coach Joe Austin. We spoke with him a little bit before today's game. Joined now by head coach Joe Austin. And coach, coming on the road, uh, one of the longer road trips that you guys are going to make this season. So first, what was the journey like to get here to Bellhaven here in the capital of Mississippi? Well, it took longer than we expected. We even added some time based on you know what the map program say it would take. But, uh, you know, all the Texas fans know that I-35 through Waco is ridiculous. And then we had a little bit of, uh, of Dallas traffic also. So we got in a little bit late, but that's okay. We still got the guys fed, got them to bed. Um, but otherwise, it was a pretty easy laid-back trip. Well, right now, looking at this game, going up against a Bellhaven defense that has been pretty stout. They haven't allowed more than 26 points in a game. We saw what they did against Mary Hart and Baylor. So what's going to be the key to solve them today for your offense that looks like they're going to get somebody back at quarterback today? Well, we're hoping that Coleman Kerr is going to get to play today. We'll see as we go in, um, see how he looks in warm-ups. He may not be 100%, and we're probably not going to have him in there the whole game, but he'll be, he'll be a boost. He started the season. Um, you know, higher on our depth chart than, than some of the folks who we've been forced to play lately. And those guys are fighting hard. Hank Moore fought really hard last week. But it'd be nice to have Coleman in. He's a sophomore that started a couple games. And uh, we're, hoping, we're hoping we'll get some help from him. But we're going to have to run the football and block people up front. And if we do that, then maybe we can get some, some good opportunities to throw the ball downfield a couple times and have a nice balance. Meanwhile, they're looking at Hunter McEachern coming back after missing last week, and he certainly brings a passing element. So what's the onus going to be, not just on the guys up front to generate pressure today, but also on the secondary when they know there's a quarterback back there who's looking to throw more than run? Well, I think, I think you nailed it. I mean, Hunter is really good. He's a very talented player, Division one player out of high school. Had a great game against us two years ago. So it's up to our defensive line um, to create some pressure, hopefully get some sacks, and definitely you know, be in his face and, and make him uncomfortable. Our secondary is probably, other than quarterback, the most depleted thing on our football team uh, between injuries and guys that have uh, stepped away from the program for other reasons. We're starting off a lot of young guys, and their backups are pretty much all freshmen. So it's going to be a challenge. He's a very good quarterback, and you're, you're correct. Our defensive line is going to need to generate some pressure to, to bail those guys out. If not bail them out, at least give them some uh, – give them some cover, right? Give them some, some assistance in, in taking care of their pass game. When you take a look at Bellhaven, and, and obviously a 1-4 and four record, but they played tough against folks this year, what is the most? What is it that they do best that you're going to have to counter today? Well, they play defense uh, really well. As you talked about, they don't give up points. They're really good on special teams. They have one of the best kick return specialists in the country. And, you know, when Hunter plays, our offense is pretty good. Their, their weaknesses, they're young on their offensive line, and that's been their Achilles heel in some games. But their defense has, has kept them in about every game. I mean, they only lost to the national champ by 10. Um, all their games have been close because their defense keeps them in it. Well, Coach, next man up is certainly the mentality I know in this. So what are you saying to the guys to get them ready to go for the game today? Well, you know, they understand our situation, but I don't think it's going to dissuade them from playing with effort. And, and playing with character. We're just going to have to go out and give them the best effort with who we have. And uh, it's a day where we can create some heroes, right? What a great story for so-and-so, who is a true freshman, that stepped up and did awesome in the Bellhaven game. I mean, that's, let's just go make some stories. Let's just create some legends and let the chips fall. Let the legends of the Pirates begin. Coach, thanks go. so much for a few minutes of your time. Thank you very much. All right, Joe Austin, he's been our guest here on the pregame show. All right, so there are the thoughts of Joe Austin getting the Pirates ready to go. Captains are... Out on the field right now, coin toss. Pirates, they have won the toss. They will defer. So Bellhaven is going to receive the kick. They will move from right to left as we see it. For Bellhaven today, they are in their green jerseys. They look a lot like the other BU that you might know in the Central Texas area, <laughs> Baylor University. They've got those green jerseys with gold accents on them, white numbers, white pants, and the white helmets with the big green B on them. As for Southwestern today, they wear their road white uniforms. They've got black numbers uh, with Southwestern and black across the chest, black numbers on the back, white pants with the black and gold striping down the side. They wear the black helmets with gold numbers on them as they get ready to go here. It is a gorgeous day in Jackson, Mississippi, 62 degrees. The fall weather has finally arrived. I know that folks were asking how things were gonna be here 
in Mississippi compared to Central Texas, uh, and the cold weather that blew through the Central Texas area has made its way to Mississippi as well, so we are just about ready to go here. Well, uh, back in the backfield, ready to receive, Logan Matherson will line up on the kick return for Bellhaven. Also back deep to receive is Colby Blunt. This will be teed up for Southwestern by, for Southwestern by Will Herbst. He will get the ball lined up and ready to go for Southwestern. Again, a big game here. The Pirates looking to snap a two-game skid. As for the Bellhaven Blazers, they are looking to get their second win of the season. We're just about ready to go here in Mississippi. We are thrilled that you are with us today. Herbst has the ball teed up. We'll take his spot. Everyone grouped very close together for Southwestern on the line. They don't have a wide spread out here as Herps approaches the ball, booms his left foot into it, and we're underway here in Jackson. Ball is caught by Romanique back at the five yard line, moving to his right hurdles, and he's driven down at the 15 yard line. Penalty flag is thrown on the play, but the, but the tackle is made on the outside edge there on special teams by Nicholas Smith, the defensive end. And we'll see what the laundry on the field is for. And it's going to be for an illegal block in the back against Bellhaven. So that's going to move them back half the distance to the goal and bring the Blazers out. Here is the offensive line for Bellhaven. From left to right, Jarvis Taylor, Zay Stevens, Tanner Holly, Kenondrian Boatman, and Cole Alpin. The wide receivers today are Lewis James along with LaMarcus Carradine, the quarterback Hunter McEachern, Brad Foley is the running back, and Gabe Wilson is the fullback. They go up against this 3-3-5 defense for Southwestern today, and McEachern will come out of the shotgun starting at his own eight yard line. Man across the formation in motion. McEachern out of the gun, takes the snap, hands it off. A juke move in the backfield, but hauled down just as he gets back to the line of scrimmage on the handoff is Foley. Southwestern clogging up the middle. And let's give you that Pirates defense. Across the front, Nicholas Smith and Garrett Womack are the defensive ends. Grant Mitchell is in the middle. The linebackers, Hayden Smith, Chris Crawford, and Brandon Century. The corners are Damian Dawson and Josiah Minifield. And the safeties, Peyton Ludeman, Caleb Richardson, and Evan Villastrigo. So that is the front today for Southwestern. Second down and nine to go for Bellhaven. They come out with two wide receivers to the near side left, one to the far side right. McEachern has it under pressure, rolling to his right, throws that way, the pass is caught, but immediately driven down as he hauls it in is Brooks Brimer, brought down on the play on the outside there by Peyton Ludeman on the tackle. Good, good pressure being applied early up front. McEachern is a short pass early on, but after that opening penalty kind of pressed against their own end zone, that's the time to bring the pressure early and make them uncomfortable. Well, now third down and nine to go from their own nine-yard line for Bellhaven going up against the Southwestern Pirates defense. The Pirates very good on defense this year. They're only giving up 14 and a half points a game at second in the ASC conference. So we'll see what they are able to do here or they dial up on third down and nine. Three down linemen, the linebackers creeping up a little bit and McEachern is gonna call time. Play clock was running down, so on the opening drive with 13.31 left to go here in the first quarter, just a little more than a minute and a half gone by, already McEachern is forced to burn a timeout. So Andrew only a couple of plays into the game, but uh, early on it looks like this Pirates defense, they are they are ready to play here. Yeah, and, and I love what, what Joe Austin said pregame. is It's time to go out there and make some stories. Let's go make some Pirate legends out of this game. You kind of have to play for a nothing-to-lose mentality when you are injury depleted. You had a long road trip coming out here, but you mentioned the fall weather. Maybe it gets you a little bit more in the football mood, and, and you love the aggressiveness early on from the Southwestern defense to pressure McEachern, try and get a quick three and out punt and short field position, get the offense going. McEachern, a guy who doesn't run the ball a whole lot. 29 rushes on the year, 136 yards. It's only about 2.3 a clip, so he normally likes to stay in the pocket. Third down and nine for the Blazers. They go three or two wide receivers to the far side right. That's the long side of the field. Fully across the formation in motion. McEachern rolling to his right, under pressure, steps up, now he's gonna throw, and that ball is too low for the intended wide receiver on the play. He was trying to swing it to Foley, and it's fourth down now, and a punt coming up for Bellhaven. Exactly what the Pirates wanted on that opening defensive stop, a quick three and out, pressure on McEachern, couldn't really find any lengthy pass on that drive, so now a punt that will hopefully take you not too far beyond midfield, and you can get your quarterback out there for the Pirates. 
So Austin Kahiaha will be back deep to receive on the play. Also back to receive is Elijah Norris, the 5'9 freshman. Punt formation coming up here. And back deep to punt it away is Andrew Norton. In his own end zone, receives and gets this one away. An end over end kick that bounces at the 40 and takes a favorable roll for the Blazers across midfield, down and out of bounds at the 41 yard line. So that is where the Pirates will take over on offense for the first time. And this is what we have been waiting to see is what is gonna happen here for this Pirates offense. Who is gonna come out as the quarterback? Uh, on the depth chart this week, it was supposed to be Hank Moore as the starting quarterback, but as they break and come out of the huddle, take a first gander, and indeed, coming on now is the six foot, 190 pound sophomore, Coleman Kerr, who made his first start in game number two of the season. So Kerr will operate out of the gun, one back to his right, it is Elijah Smith. Brandenburg moves across the formation in motion, a handoff going back the other way at Smith, trying to get to the edge, stutter steps as he's driven back inside and moves across midfield as he's hauled down on a gainer of five on the play. So second down and five coming up for Southwestern. Well, biggest gain so far for any offense and that man in motion kind of pulled the Bellhaven defensive line to the left, handoff goes the other way and it opened up a couple of yards for the, the running back. So now a wildcat formation here. Out of the shotgun set, three wide receivers of the far side life. Keeping it is Shaw. He'll push ahead and be driven down in the middle. Right in the big, thick middle of it is Bo Robertson, the middle linebacker for Bellhaven. But it's third down and short coming up now for Southwestern as they moved into Blazers territory. And I would expect that that's something that we're going to see today is a rotation of who's in at the quarterback spot. And right now, Wildcat formation. And actually, this is J.J. Slack who is in at quarterback, the five foot 100 and, or five foot 10, 165 pound freshman out of Liberty Hill. He's got one back in the backfield with him. It is Elijah Smith. Snap is back the keeper and flung down by his helmet as he tried to get to the edge with Slack. Coming off of the edge to absolutely blow that play up right there was Isaiah Blackman, the outside linebacker and that's a loss on the play, so fourth down coming up for the Pirates. And yeah, well, you bring in J.J. Slack, the former the uh, former high school quarterback that is out of Liberty Hill, like you said, Garrett, and you knew he wasn't going to pass, but it looked like he had an option on that run. Instead, he tried to take it up the middle, and Blackman was there quickly in the backfield to yank him down. So now back deep to receive for Bellhaven on the play. It's going to be number 29, Colby Blunt, to return. Back to punt. For Southwestern is Victor Windfeld. High snap, moves to his right. Pressure coming up the middle. He's hit as he gets the kick away. And that will bounce at the 25-yard line and be touched and die right there. And Windhurst is looking around and saying, hey, what? Where's the flag? They just came in and got me around my legs. He's kind of limping off the field as he leaves, but the ball is down at the 25-yard line. The head official said there was actually some fingertips that got on that football thus. There's no roughing the kicker penalty, but you hate to see the kicker Winfeld limping off the field. He got smoked and kind of came down awkwardly, but I think Bellhaven was able to tip that football. So each team with a possession so far, both of them going uh, with, well, a three and out for Bellhaven, and Southwestern did get a first down, but then they are forced to punt. So here's McEachern, one back to either side out of the gun. Fakes the handoff to Blunt, keeps it himself, and has got some running room at the 40, across the 45, and brought down as he gets into Southwestern territory on the outside edge of the 48 by Josiah Minenfield. Long game, though, on the play, and the first first down of the game for Bellhaven. Yeah, there are those legs from McEachern, Garrett, and like you said, nine times out of ten, he's going to try and sit there and throw the, throw the football, but that time he saw some room and took advantage of it. Well, and right there, the offense getting up quick to snap the ball, and play is blown dead. The chains had not actually moved and reset, so there was no opportunity for Bellhaven to move at a quick clip there. But a nice gain up the middle on the play, a run of 27 for Hunter McEachern, the, or the junior quarterback originally from Keller, Texas. I don't think the Pirates' defense will mind the quick breather. Bellhaven, after the big play, got a little eager, got a little quick to try and keep it going. Ball spotted on the far side, Hash moving from right to left. Bellhaven out of the gun, McKeecher. Three-step drop, looking, throws it right side, slings it, and it's hauled in at the 30, spinning back in, and then brought down by a gang tackle on the far edge there. On the catch, it looked like a Marcus Caradine hauls it in on the outside edge. 
Yeah, Jules Williams was the corner closest to the receiver on that play, but he was playing just a little bit far off of him, and that was an easy out route to get to the sideline and pull that in. So now a handoff right side, slicing back in is Blunt. He gets across the 30, down to the 29-yard line, a minimal gain, second down and eight coming up here. Five minutes gone by in the first quarter, no score between the Blazers and the Pirates. McEachern operates out of the gun, fakes the handoff, looking left side, pumps, clutches, throws over the middle. It's hauled in at the 25-yard line. Catch is made by Carradine. He's hauled down on the play. Peyton Ludeman was there to make the tackle, but it's now going to be third down and two to go for Bellhaven. Just a short little comeback route there that worked after McEachern was looking deep. I think his first read was to the end zone, but the Pirates did a good job of covering deep, and he was able to get a low one over the middle. So third down and short coming up for this Bellhaven offense. They will still operate out of the gun, fully to the left of McEachern, the quarterback, but they bring in an extra lineman to block. Snap is back, it's bobbled. McEachern trying to keep it up himself and gets across the 20. Ball looked like it might have popped out, but it's fallen right back on by McEachern as he picks up enough yardage for a first down, a gain of five on the play. Looks like at a moment it was going to be a dead play, but McEachern made a really nice shuffle step to his left side to get a couple of extra yards. Ball might have come out, but I think he landed right on top of it and prevented any fumble. So now first down and 10 to go. Bellhaven inside of the red zone at the 19-yard line on their second drive of the game. One wide receiver split to the far side right, one to the near side left. McEachern hands off, fully looking for a hole and has it on the right side, steps out of a tackle at the 10 towards the pylon on the right side, and he is into the end zone for a 19-yard touchdown run for Brad Foley. Fifth rushing touchdown of the year, and the Blazers have a 6-0 lead here in the first. Just kind of had to make something extra out of that run on the far sideline, nearly got tripped up in the backfield, and there was a couple of other tacklers down there on the sideline that tried to push him out of bounds. That's just aggression and determination to get to the pylon and score. So a 19-yard touchdown run for Brad Foley, the 5'9", 202-pound junior out of Memphis, Tennessee, and Bellhaven strikes first. BAT on now for Cade Ganey. Snap is down, hold is down, and the kick is up, and it is good. 8.38 left to go here in the first quarter. It's Bellhaven 7 and Southwestern nothing. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. 8.38 left to go in the first quarter. The Bellhaven Blazers leading the Southwestern Pirates 7 to nothing. Garrett Green with you here. Andrew Chapman alongside. So Bellhaven on their second drive of the game. We saw Hunter McEacher use his legs a little bit. And then Foley, who came into this game 7th in the ASC in all-purpose yards, a 19-yard touchdown run to put Bellhaven on the board first. Yeah, on the first drive of the game, Southwestern did a good job of applying that pressure and really cutting off the pass. So second time around, Bellhaven goes to the run. They were able to open it up with their legs with a couple of big plays and get on the board. Back deep to receive for Southwestern is David Brandenburg along with Austin Castellaja. So they will wait to receive the right-footed kick that's coming for the man who made the PAT for Bellhaven, that's number 40, Kate Ganey, the 5'7", 157-pound freshman. Penalty on the play, so the ball's spotted at midfield, and the right-footed kick is away, and that one is going to be at the back of the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. So a touchback, and that's how Southwestern will take over and come out now. So we'll see what they're able to do. Uh, Andrew, we talked with Coach Austin before the game, and he said it's not going to be 100% 
seeing Kerr out in the in the backfield there is the starting quarterback today so obviously a little bit of wildcat mix to try and get this running offense going and we'll see if Southwestern is able to get it rolling here on their second drive of the game. Yeah we already saw JJ Slack come in on a third down play and try and run an option but Hank Moore as well keep eyes on him he'll likely see some time also. Well Kerr is out in the gun one back to his right three wide receivers in the near side right now a man moves in motion it's a play action setting throwing his feet across the middle and that is hold in by Brandenburg across the 40 down to the 44 make it the 45 yard line so a nice gain of 20 on first down for Southwestern and there's your lead slot receiver making a great catch he high pointed that football right up there at the top of all purpose yards in the ASC and he's helping Southwestern to their biggest play of the game now first down and 10 Kerr out of the gun, one back to his right, across the formation, fakes the handoff, looking left side, now swings it, and it's pulled in by Castellaja. He is brought down as he gets to the 45-yard line into Blazers territory. That's going to be a first down as Justin Percy, the junior cornerback, hauled him down. Nice mix of passing plays with Brandenburg on the long one, and then those little passes out into the flat are going to be key for Coleman Kerr in this game as well. Didn't mention it in the pregame, but you can get big yardage on those flat plays and some blocking. So Kerr, a couple of completions on this drive. He's got 30 yards passing already. Handoff goes straight up the middle, but brought down as he slices through the line on the handoff for Southwestern. Looks like Jeremiah Richardson, the Little Elm native, pushing into the middle there. Minimal gain as he's brought down right in the heart by Colton Strain, and it's second down and nine. So a little bit of a change there to see Richardson in and running the ball. And now deep in the backfield, it's Devin Shaw. Out of the gun, pressure shown from the edges by Bellhaven. Castellaja moves across the formation, now goes back to the left side. Penalty flag is thrown, it's an end around, coming back the opposite way, and plenty of running room across the 40 to the 35-30. Stutter stepping out of a tackle, and ultimately hauled down on the play is Elijah Norris, the San Antonio native. There is a flag on the play, and this one looks like it's coming back for Southwestern. It's going to be an illegal motion against the offense. Yeah, it was uh, Castellaja who started to his right, went back to his original position to his left, but the ball was snapped before he set his feet on the line, and that, thus that illegal man in motion is going to bring the play back. So instead of another first down, it's now second down and 14 to go for the Pirates as they will bring in a wave of substitutions. It is still Coleman Kerr, the sophomore quarterback, in the shotgun, 7 nothing in favor of Bellhaven. 6.52 left to go in the first. Faking the handoff, now a throw right side and miscommunication on the route. He was looking to hit Anthony Stevens, who ran a little bit deeper of a route, got to the sticks. That was supposed to be a back shoulder throw there and just a miscommunication on the outer edge. Yeah, it was supposed to be a curl right there towards the sideline. Couple yards too far, and that messes up the timing with your quarterback. Throw is where it was supposed to be. Route might have just been a little long. So now third down and 14 to go for Southwestern, just into Bellhaven territory. This ball spotted on the near side hash at the 49. Kerr out of the gun, flips it underneath, and Brandenburg has got a hole at the 40 across the 35. Enough for a first down, and finally out of bounds at the 29 yard line. Got an extra shove at the end, but ultimately is. Well, there is a flag that's in late, so we'll see if this is going to add on additional yardage on a possible personal foul, and it will. So a personal foul. So tack on half the distance to the goal as the ball was down to the 29-yard line. we got to give some credit, too, to the guard, James Hill. He came up with a big block right there that opened up the hole and allowed that play to develop. The Bellhaven offense was caught moving to the right. Hill laid the block down, and that leads to a big play. So now it's first down and 10 to go from the 15-yard line for Southwestern. Three wide receivers to the far side left, one to the near side right. Kerr out of the shotgun. Stares at the defensive front, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, throwing right side, and it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Combination of Colton Strain and get this one, Rox Schechnader on the stop right there for Bellhaven. Second down and 10. I have to say that one three times fast to get yep. that name correct. Rox Schechnader. <laughs> That's a good one. Spelled S C H E X N A Y D R E. Was talking to the SID for Bellhaven and said, All right, I'm not even going to take a guess. <laughs> what do you got for me? 
Second down and 10, Southwestern trailing 7 nothing with 6.19 left to go in the first quarter. Man across the formation in motion. This is a keeper by Stack who gets across, or Slack, excuse me, who gets back to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that as they went with the freshman out of Liberty Hill, and it's third down and nine to go. And why not try and make your quarterback position a little bit more diverse with bringing in those different guys. J.J. Slack, obviously the athletic guy, wide receiver on the depth chart who's being tasked with using those legs today at the quarterback position, but why not try and mix it up, especially in the red zone? Well, back in now is Kerr for this third down and nine play. Ball spotted on the 14-yard line. Out of the gun, Kerr looking left side, throwing that way, and the ball's batted down by Isaiah Blackman, was jumping in the air, reached back across, and knocked it down. It's fourth down, and the Pirates are going to bring out the field goal unit. Yeah, the Tuscaloosa, Alabama native is given the Pirates a lot of issues today, not only in the backfield, especially he had a sack earlier, but uh, also with the bat down of the pass, he's reading the eyes of the quarterback well. So now on to attempt the field goal is Will Herbst, the 5'11", 170-pound sophomore from Bernie, Texas. Four for six this year in field goal. Snap is back, hold is down, the kick is away, and it is up and no good. Looks like that one missed just wide the left. So Bellhaven, after giving up some chunk yardage, holds up and the Pirates miss a field goal. So the Blazers will take back over deep in their own territory at the 13-yard line. Tough break after a really solid drive put together by the Pirates both in the air and then also with some nifty running work. They are unable to come away with points in that one and a field goal you would really like to have. So now it'll be McEachern back out to operate this offense for Bellhaven. Facing into the three-man front for Southwestern. Snap is back, play action. Looking right side, the throw is dropped. On the outside edge right there, Mario Asengumla, the quarterback who also serves as a wide receiver, uh, wasn't able to hold that one in. And a flag, not down on the play. Well, there might have been some. So instead, it'll be second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. 7-0 in favor of Bellhaven. 5.27 left to go here in the opening quarter in Jackson, Mississippi. One back to either side of the quarterback, McEachern. One wide receiver split either way as well. Snap is back. Fake the handoff throw near side. Asin Gula has it, and he breaks across the 25-yard line before he's hauled down at the 26. Play made by Addison Wheeler, the 6-foot, 200-pound freshman out of Mansfield High School. Third down at about three coming up. Yeah, and so far the... Well, even Blazers have done a good job of using all parts of the field. They've been running to the right, passing to the left. They've been trying to make over-the-middle plays as well, trying to spread out that Pirates defense. So a big third down coming up here. Third and three ball on the 27-yard line of Bellhaven as they move from right to left. Back deep behind McEachern. Snap is back. They'll hand it off. Foley looking for some running room. Stretch to the outside edge and crashing down to come in and make the tackle for Southwestern is Caleb Richardson. Safety thrust into action, and he hauls down the running back Foley for a loss of eight on the play, and it's fourth down and nine. Same kind of play that Foley was able to take 19 yards to the house the last time around, but that time the Pirates' defense had it snuffed out. Foley, very athletic runner in the backfield. Got to get to him quickly, otherwise he's going to break those tackles. So the punt formation on now, as it'll be Andrew Norton back deep to punt away. Castellaja waiting deep as the first punt is away. Right-footed kick. This is short. It'll bounce at the 45-yard line, and after taking a favorable bounce for Bellhaven last time, this one will stop still just in Blazers' territory at the 49-yard line. So a big defensive stand right there by Southwestern to hold the Blazers and get the ball back to the offense. Yeah, getting ready to go on their third drive of the game, and all three, uh, really at least two of the three, have put them in really good field position. The first drive of the game led to a three and out, a short punt, and then the Pirates right back on the field. Here they are, more great field position. Got to try and get some points out of this drive. Right on the midfield stripe. So it is Kerr out of the gun, one back deep behind him. Two wide receivers split either way. Snap is back, faking the handoff, now looking back to the right side, it's a swing pass and it's hauled in on the outside edge. 30, 20, 15, and shoved out of bounds on the reception. On the far side is Jeremiah Richardson. 
but a play of 41 yards, and Southwestern is in the red zone, and they have first and goal from the nine. Just a quick little play action, fake handoff to Richardson. He busted through the line, and he was gone. Nobody picked him up. The corners were all playing deep. A 10-yard pass ends up being about a 25-yard game, maybe even a little more. Great play design there. So now first and goal. Kerr out of the gun. Handoff, Smith breaking to the left side. Gets out of one tackle, but he's flung down at the five-yard line by Justin Percy, the safety who came down. Still a gain on the play of about four yards for Southwestern, so they'll have second and goal to go from the five. Trailing 7 nothing with 3.39 left of the first. See what they do with their personnel this time around, whether they want to try and Use the legs of J.J. Slack once again. Maybe try a little screen pass in the flat, something we haven't seen yet. And indeed, Slack is in at the quarterback position now. Working out of the shotgun, snap is back, hands it off. Smith trying to bounce it to the outside, heading to the pylon, dives, and he's in. Five-yard touchdown run for Elijah Smith, and the Pirates are on the board here in the first quarter. Well, it's the game of deception right there. You bring in J.J. Slack, and, well, he's going to run the ball, right? That's what they've shown each of the first two times. This time around, he hands it off, and Elijah Smith able to take it to that pylon. How about J.J. Slack? We saw him practicing some of those handoffs pregame, and there he is executing one. Well, right now, the bad news down on the field right now. Master Davis, the six foot one, 275-pound senior for Bellhaven, their nose tackle, is down on the ground in pain right now, gripping at his knee. A native of Mobile, Alabama, down there on the coast here in Alabama, and they will tend to him before the Southwestern Pirates come out to try and attempt this extra point. But that's good right there. Smith, the final nine yards of that drive for Southwestern after the completion uh, that went for 41 yards. The big play on that one, uh, swinging out to Jeremiah Richardson, the freshman out of Little Elm, Texas. So uh, for Southwestern, you like the response right there. And for the offense, see a good mix of the run and the pass and finding ways. We talked to Coach Austin. He said, we're going to need to find some big plays, and they were able to do just that. Yeah, it's two really solid uh, drives put together. One that probably should have resulted in a field goal and probably have the lead at this point, but the field goal is missed. You come right back, though, undeterred, and you put together a great drive, just a few plays to go 50 yards. The Pirates have been picking up big yardage so far in this game. A little bit uncharacteristic for the Bellhaven defense after nine combined points over the last two weeks. That's a confidence booster right there for the Pirates to get an early TD. Well, the good news, Master Davis is standing on his feet right now, very gingerly putting weight on his leg, and uh, he's going to slowly make his way off of the field. Again, the backup nose tackle for Bellhaven out of Lafleur High School there in the Mobile area, and he's going to have one of his teammates come over and help him off. That's one where, with the athletic trainers, they can only do so much when you're taking a look at a guy who's 275 pounds. You, you need someone to help him off the field as well. Need a little help and perhaps a little extra painful when you have all that weight to try and support as you, you, you get off the field. But for Master Davis, hopefully he's going to be all right as he makes it off the field of play is checked up by that training staff. Well, Will Herbst is out to attempt this PAT. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is away, and that click kick splits the uprights to tie the ball game. 3.16 left to go in the first quarter. It's the Bellhaven Blazers 7 and the Southwestern Pirates 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Be Bellhaven Bowl Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. Those Southern League Pirates tie the game up at 7 with the Bellhaven Blazers with 3.16 left to go in the first quarter. ASC action for you here on SHN Sports, and Herbst is there to kick it away. Deep waiting is Logan Matherin along with uh, Blunt back there for Bellhaven. 
Kick is away, it's a short one towards the right side. That's gonna bounce and be picked up by Blunt at the 21 yard line, crashing in though, and making the tackle on the play for Southwestern. A great job by the gunner on the outside. That's Nicholas Smith coming down to make the tackle. And he just shot through the field like a bullet getting there to the backfield. You thought with the squib kick that there might have been some time to make that return for Colby Blunt. And I think he thought he had a route. And then out of nowhere, Nicholas Smith comes in and yanks him down to the turf. So now Bellhaven will start at the 21-yard line, moving from right to left. Last time out for Bellhaven, it was a three and out. Some good defense played against McEachern, who got it done with his legs the first time through. So one back to his left, out of the shotgun, man across the formation, in motion, it's the fullback Wilson. Snap is back, play action. Looking down the right side, under pressure, and brought down in the backfield. McEachern is sacked, and it's the leader in the ASC in sacks, Garrett Womack bringing him down on the edge there. Sixth sack of the year for Womack, the Lake Travis product. It's a loss of four, and it brings up second and 14. Yeah, 19th tackle on the year for him. He's a beast up there on the line, and he's going to be the guy that Bellhaven really keeps eyes on. Maybe they have to try and double him up to keep him from getting from McEacher, and he's a big game changer in this one. So now second down and 14 to go for Bellhaven, and they will bring in Mario Asangunla, their backup quarterback who's more of a running threat. Snap is back. They'll hand it off. It's Foley trying to slither through a hole, but he is gang-tackled and pushed back as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one Addison Wheeler, the freshman, finishing him off. And it's third down, and we'll call it 13 to go for Bellhaven. Well, after they've really done a good job of shutting down the passing offense so far, the big adjustment to make was try and contain that rush after Bellhaven used the feet of the quarterback and then also the running backs to get a touchdown. And so far, the adjustments from Southwestern have been continuous. Three-man front for Southwestern playing that 3-3-5 defense that we are seeing Wheeler playing in kind of a safety linebacker hybrid role today. It is McEachern back in at the quarterback position. Three wide receivers to the long side of the field. That's the right side, one to the near side left. Snap is back, McEachern. Deep drop, Womack pressuring him, slip screen underneath, fully has the catch, stiff arms out of a tackle, and is across the 30, this could be danger. Across midfield to the 40, he's being chased down and shoved down all the way at the 25 yard line of scripts, slip screen to Foley. Finally shoved out of bounds by Caleb Richardson, but a big game for Bellhaven on third down. Yeah, that's great speed from Caleb Richardson to save six. He thought that once he hit the near sideline, he was gone. Look at that speed though catching up is for Richardson. That play though developed on a big pancake block from the center. Tanner Hawley went in and put in some work to help open up that line. So now first down and 10 from the 25 yard line after a completion of 57 yards. Uh, the completion was only about four yards but then Foley doing the rest of the work. McEachern with Foley behind him in the shotgun. Why not feed it to him again? Trying to find some space, bounces it outside where he's contained and ultimately pushed out of bounds. Uh, holding the edge there was Josiah Minifield, the senior out of Brophy College Prep in the Arizona area. And it's second down and 10 as we tick under a minute left to go in the first quarter. And Southwestern, if they can continue to try and contain that flat, you're gonna be able to contain Foley. He has not tried to run anything up the middle so far. The key turn out of the gun, looks to the right, might be a broken play. He's going to keep it himself, just put his head down and be hauled down from behind by Gage Bernard on the play. Flag comes in late. It was a case where the snap came back to McEachern. He looked to his right and Foley was bailing out of the right side of the backfield. I think that was a miscommunication. And it's going to be a chop block against Bellhaven. So that will back up the Blazers on the penalty. Something both sides have really avoided so far on their respective drives is pushing themselves back, shooting themselves in the foot with those penalty yards. And so far, Bellhaven really with their biggest pushback of the game so far. So a 15 yard penalty makes it second down and 15 to go all the way back at the 35 yard line, 10 yard penalty, excuse me. So second and 20, 40 seconds left to go in the first quarter, tied at seven between the Blazers and the Pirates. Out of the shotgun formation with Blunt to his left. It's McEachern. Two wide receivers to the far side right will swing it to Blunt in the flat, looking for some running room, and he slides out of one tackle before he's pushed out of bounds at the 20 yard line. Chris Crawford, the senior out of Houston, coming over to push him out of bounds. 
But they get back those 10 yards and a couple of extra. That sets up a third down and seven to go. With 20 seconds left in the first quarter, we'll see if the Blazers take the snap or if they flip the field around here at the end of the first quarter. McKeecher not in any kind of rush in the huddle, and it would appear that this is going to run out the end of the first quarter as the clock goes inside a three, down to two, down to one, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter. We've finished off one here in the capital of the Magnolia State, Jackson, Mississippi. It's the Southwestern Pirates seven and the Bellhaven Blazers seven. Back with the second quarter on the other side. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Start of the second quarter here in Jackson, Mississippi. The Bellhaven Blazers tied at seven with the Southwestern Pirates. Southwestern trying to make a defensive stand here. Third down and seven coming out of the end of the first quarter for Bellhaven, now moving from left to right. Quarterback Hunter McKeachern out of the gun. He's got three wide receivers to the near side right, one to the far side left. And a timeout is called by Bellhaven. Wow. Second time out of the half for the Blazers. and They've had to burn them when they don't want to. That's not where you want to use your timeout right there, Andrew. Yeah, and the first one of the game was, was used almost just a minute in, I think, on a, just a general miscommunication from the offense. So now you've blown through two of them in the first half. And those are valuable timeouts to blow through one when the clock stopped to begin the second quarter. Must have been some sort of big miscommunication. Now you obviously don't want to take the penalty and back yourself up five yards for either an illegal substitution or a delay of game, but coming right out of the second half, that, or right out of the end of the first quarter, that's that's tough. Yeah, and the final play of that first quarter was a good run by Colby Blunt, but of course it really didn't help them at all because the original yardage was negated on a penalty, so so far penalties have been a problem for Bellhaven on this drive. So now it's Asangunla out of the shotgun. And that's a low snap, picks it up, slings it to the right side, Blunt has it, and he's brought down in the backfield, crashing down Hayden Smith, the native of Katy, to make the tackle for a loss. It'll be fourth down all the way back at the 29-yard line. Loss of seven on the play. Really solid instincts from Hayden Smith. Probably sees that bobbled snap, or it was really a snap that rolled all the way to the hands of Austin Gula. So with Hayden Smith, you're thinking, all right, only spot to go is in the flat, and he rushed up there and made a quick tackle. So now with the loss there, that pushes the Blazers out of field goal range. So the punt unit is on now as Andrew Norton, the freshman, is back to receive this standing at the 42. Another low snap. This one is a high end over end kick towards the near sideline, and that'll be out of bounds. They're going to spot that probably right about the 15-yard line. That's exactly where the line jibs comes down. And so Southwestern, after giving up the long 57-yard play, the defense holds, and with the loss, they get the ball back instead of maybe giving up a field goal attempt. Yeah, penalty yardage and a couple of broken plays on the back end ends what really was a solid bait Bellhaven drive to start that one out. So credit the Pirates on putting the pressure on, and well, they're going to start deep in their end zone. They've already proven, though, that they can drive the length of the field once in this game. So it will be Coleman Kerr out as the quarterback, the six-foot sophomore. Across the formation, they'll hand it off. It's Kostin Yaha, and he's got space to run at the 20. Across the 25, look at him go. 40, and shoved out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Give him the 47. It's a pickup of 22 on the play, and a big gain for Southwestern to move just outside of Blazers territory. How about Austin Kasanyaha, a guy who maybe he can be one of those stories that emerges today. He's already found ways to contribute throughout the season for Southwestern, but a couple of big plays for him today. So now Kerr out of the gun. 
First down and 10 from the 48 yard line. Across the formation, they fake it to Castanaja. Suttery feet, high throw through the arms of the defensive back. Incomplete, Justin Percy came on. They were trying to get it to David Brandenburg underneath. Yeah, Brandenburg, he was those, one of the guys who high pointed that ball in the first quarter, made a really nice reception of about 20 yards or so. Same kind of play, looking for him over the middle, but it sailed him a bit and nearly flew into the midsection of the cornerback. Tied at seven, Blazers getting on the board first with a 19 yard touchdown run by Brad Foley. Snap is back, Kerr hands it off straight up the middle. Shaw breaks through one tackle across the 45 in Blazers territory down to the 44 yard line. So we'll call it a pickup of eight on the play. Brings up third down and two for Southwestern. The big rumbling, stumbling Devin Shaw. He, he's going to he's gonna tuck it into the midsection. And he's going to try and plow it right down the middle. Elijah Smith, we've seen him kind of go to the, the, uh, the sidelines rushing. Shaw right up the gut. Smith with the five-yard rushing touchdown. He gets the ball here on third down. Tries to pile his way through the middle, but he has stood up and driven back. Right in the middle of it was Rock. Shex Nader, the junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to blow that play up, and it's fourth down for Southwestern. And it looks like they will go with the punting unit here. No, they're going to line up and go for it. Love it. Fourth down and just a couple of yards to go inside of Blazers territory. Kerr is the quarterback. Shaw to his right. Across the formation, Brandenburg, and movement on the line, and that is going to back it up. Now maybe you have to reconsider. And indeed, that will, instead of fourth down and two, make it about fourth down and seven. And so now, jog the offense off, bring on the punt team, and this will be a punt away here as it looks like Victor Winfield out of Denmark is going to come on and punt this one away. Of course, Winfield in his previous punt was run into, was looking for a flag, and kind of hobbled off the field a little bit. But now he's back deep to receive this one. Blunt standing back at the 10-yard line. See if they punt it away from him. Snap is back. This one is a spiraling kick down towards the 20 at a one-hop. It'd be fielded by Blunt, and they say that he waved for a fair catch where he picked it up. So Blunt picked it up and had some running room in front of him, and the officials come back and say, no, we saw a fair catch signal. And so instead of some running room, it looked like it was going to be a good return there. And instead, it's blown dead back of the 18 yard line. Yeah, and kind of some mixed reaction coming from the Bellhaven sideline of a couple of coaches hollering at the officials saying our guy had the chance to run. A couple of court, uh, coaches trying to bring the sideline back and just put it back up on the video monitor here in house, missed the play, but for Southwestern, that'll serve them as a break. So now it'll be first down and 10 to go. Just about three minutes gone by here in the second quarter, tied at seven between Bellhaven and Southwestern. Hassan Gunla, the quarterback, out of the shotgun, operating with one back to his left, takes the snap, hands it off, trying to bounce it outside and getting that way is Foley, and he's shoved out of bounds as he gets to the fort, as he gets to the 24 yard line. So that is a pickup of 10 on the play and good for a first down. And that's a really solid adjustment on the run from Brad Foley. Very Le'Veon Bell-esque right there. He just kind of hid behind the offensive line, didn't see a hole, shuffled to the outside, made something happen. First snap is back and straight up the middle. This is Blunt, breaks out of a tackle, still on his feet across the 45 and down to the 49-yard line. So a couple of bursting runs on the play as Hayden Smith ultimately drags him down, but it's another first down for Bellhaven. So after seeing McKeecher and trying to swing the ball, now they're going with Asagunla, who's primarily a running quarterback, rolling out towards his left, looking that way, slings it to the near sideline, and that's hauled in by LaMarcus Carradine at the 38-yard line. So another chunk yardage gain inside of Southwestern Territory, and first down for the Blazers. Going up tempo. Asagunla hands it off, Blunt up the middle, and he's brought down and actually wrapped up in the middle. Plugging the hole there was Gage Bernard, the sophomore out of Beaumont. It's a loss of three on the play, and good right there for Southwestern to drive back this Blazers offense a little bit. Yeah, they just had to stop some of the bleeding. Couple of big runs followed by a first down pass, and, well, if Bellhaven gets that run working, they're just going to 
try and keep slamming it up the middle against you. So a good stop there, and now we'll see what they try and do to adjust. Rushes of 12 and 24 yards before a completion of 14 for those chunk yardage for Bellhaven. But after the loss, now it's second down, and McEachern is back in out of the gun. One back to either side. He will hand off to Blunt. Flag flies. Blunt wrapped up, steps out of a tackle at the 40, down the 30, trying to tiptoe the sidelines before he's pushed out of bounds by Damian Dawson. But this one is likely coming back with a flag on the play. Thrown right at the line of scrimmage right as the snap came back. And it's going to be a legal motion on the Blazers. And someone not set when they snap that ball. And again, a penalty that halts a very effective early drive for Bellhaven. We'll see if they can come back from that penalty yardage. But it's what led to them ultimately punting in their last drive and prevented a score. So now second down and 18 to go back at the 45-yard line of Southwestern for Bellhaven. Moving left to right with 10.30 left to go in the second quarter, tied at 7. McEachern out of the gun, blunt to his right. Two wide receivers split either way. Three-man front for Southwestern. McEachern, quick swing pass. Blunt has it being pursued from behind and wrapped up and brought down after a gain of a couple. Combination of Gage Bernard and Nicholas Smith in there to make the tackle. So a minimal gain on the play. Call it four, and that brings up third down and 15 to go for the Blazers. Both sides getting a little bit fired up after that play as well. Caleb Richardson coming over, talking to Nick Lauderdale a little bit. See if he can try and help fire up that Southwestern defense. Third down and 16 to go from the 30 or from the 43 yard line. The key turn out of the gun. Stares into the front, takes the snap. Blitz coming off of the edge, climbs the pocket, throws over the middle, and it's behind Caradine, the intended wide receiver, for an incompletion. So fourth down coming up, and Bellhaven will be forced to punt again. So a good stand by Southwestern's defense. Yeah, and if you're Southwestern right now in that defense, you're just telling your guys, hey, okay, they might be starting these drives strong, but then they're trying to pick up the pace a little bit, and it's led to a couple of penalties. The man in motion while the snap was gone, and the last couple of drives, Bellhaven has really halted their momentum through their own fault. So indeed, it'll be Andrew Norton back to punt this one away. Has to dip down before he gets it and sends a spiraling kick. Fair catch called for and made just outside of the 10 at the 12. Make it the 14-yard line by none other than Austin, excuse me, none other than Austin Castellaja to bring it in. So that's where Southwestern will start on offense. Tied at 7 with 9.18 left to go here in the first half between the Blazers and the Pirates. Blazers getting on the board first on a 19-yard touchdown run by Brad Foley, but then a five-yard run by Elijah Smith tying the contest up. Seen a combination of Coleman Kerr along with J.J. Slack and a quarterback, and Slack is going to be the man out of the gun right now with Smith to his left. Three wide receivers to the far side right, staring into the three-man front. Man across the formation of motion, snap is back, Slack keeps it and dips inside, tries to spin out of a tackle, but is pushed down. Play was blown up on the outside edge there by Colton Strain, Strain the sophomore out of Clinton, Louisiana. Yeah, and right there he was able to fake out one of the defensive linemen, Mitchell Ribrawl, and ultimately the option was held on to by Slack and then he was brought down, but it was a good shake move. Just couldn't get any yardage out of it. Well, you mentioned Slack coming in. Remember, at Liberty Hill, they actually run the wing T offense still, so he's got that ability as an option quarterback. Kerr is back in, though. Takes the snap and a quick pitch to Castanaja. Looking to get to the edge. Gets across the 20, but he's wrapped up. The ball comes out. The Blazers say that they have it, and the officials agree. Fumble caused on the play at the 20-yard line and ultimately recovered down there in the middle. It looks like it was Strain who fell on it. And so the Blazers get it back with a short field just inside the 20-yard line, or just outside of, excuse me, at the 21. And Castellaja took a big hit, but it wasn't by just one guy. He got pummeled by a pair of Bellhaven tacklers, and that ball, I think, didn't get out on the original hit, I think more so when he started to go to the ground. It's one of those plays where 
he had the chance to try and look at it again. He'd like to see where exactly that ball came out, but so far for Bellhaven, that gives them their best field position to start a drive today. First down and 10 from the Southwestern 21-yard line. McEachern pitches it outside Blunt, trying to get to the edge, but he's ridden down from behind and ultimately brought down by Chris Crawford for a loss of one on the play. So the Pirates doing a good job maintaining those edges early on after they gave up a couple of sprints to the outside. Good job by the linebackers to contain there. Second down and 11 coming up. 8-10 left to go in the first half. Tied at seven between the Pirates and the Blazers. Third ever meeting between these two teams. Southwestern has won the previous two. Loaded backfield. Two backs to either side and one behind McEachern. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Foley, swings it out to Blunt in space. Down the sideline at the 10. Puts his shoulder down at the five-yard line, but goes out of bounds. On the outside edge there, it was Damian Dawson but a big pickup on the play of 17 yards, and it's first and goal now for the Blazers. It was such an effective fake handoff. The Southwestern defense kind of converged on the running back. They, they went towards the middle to try and stop the run, plug the hole, and ultimately the run to the outside was effective. A ton of room. Well, Colby Blunt was a guy who coming into today had 17 rushes for 90 yards, 99 yards, and seven receptions for 42 yards. I think safe to say he's come close to passing that so far today. McEachern takes the snap, going to try and keep it himself, looking for a lane, but he is ridden down right at the original line of scrimmage. Slicing through was Addison Wheeler, the freshman, to bring down the quarterback for a loss of one. Good job by the linebacking core for Southwestern. And a loss of one on the play. And trying to use the quarterback's legs deep inside the red zone on first down. Now I'd expect McEachern try and take a shot towards the pylon. And if you're Southwestern, try and expect that coming. They really have not utilized the arm of their quarterback a whole lot today. I'd expect McEachern to try and air one out. So a late penalty there called against... Going against back. the Blazers, so that's going to move the ball all the way back to the 21-yard line. So second and goal from the 21 now. So there you go, second and goal. Spotted back at the 21-yard line after the 15-yard penalty. So another break for Southwestern and another mistake for the Blazers. Two wide receivers split to the near side right, one to the far side left. McEachern claps the hands, receives the ball. Play action, five step drop under pressure, steps out of it, throws back across his body. That ball is bobbled and incomplete. Damian Dawson comes across and knocks it down. And tough to say how McEachern holds on to that football. Garrett Womack, he was in the backfield and he pretty much had arms wrapped around the Bellhaven quarterback, and at one point the ball was just outstretched and being held onto by the tips of his fingers. Somehow still able to get a pass off, but still broken up. So third down and goal back at the 21 yard line for Bellhaven, even at seven between the Blazers and the Pirates, 6.53 left to go in quarter number two. McEachern with one back behind him, Pirates with their three man front. Here's the snap, play action again. McEachern pumps, throws left side, one-on-one, -on -one, and it's hauled in on the outside edge. No. They say that Gabe Wilson was out of bounds as he brought it in, and it's an incompletion. Wow. There's wow. that corner route to the pylon from Hunter McEachern that we were expecting. Finally, Bellhaven tries to air it out with their quarterback. It was a really solid adjustment in the air by Gabe Wilson to make that catch with a man on him. I don't think he could toe tap inside the end zone, though. That's swinging your fullback out to yeah. try and get to the corner pylon. But now, here comes the field goal attempt. This is going to be a 37-yarder. It's going to be attempted by Kate Ganey. Waits the snap. It's back. The hold is down. The kick is up. End over end towards the field goal upright, and it bangs off the left upright. No good. Garrett Womack fired up. The Pirates' defense is as well. They hold. Remember, it was first and goal from the five, and it turns into a missed field goal to keep this game knotted at seven. Pirates miss one. Blazers miss one now, and this really has the feel, at least in the first half here, of a game that 
could take us down to the wire today. Now, neither team has been perfect by any stretch. There's been penalties on the Bellhaven side that have affected them. For Southwestern, a turnover as well, but might just be that one team that can put together the first perfect drive of the game that ends up winning this thing. So the Pirates take over at the 21-yard line. Out of the shotgun, snap is back, hanging on to it, and pushing forward is Jeremiah Richardson out of the Wildcat, written down on the outside edge there by Rox Shexnader. Gain of two, second down and eight coming up. So again, we've seen a couple of different options so far today, seeing the likes of Coleman Kerr line up at quarterback, Jeremiah Richardson in the Wildcat, and J.J. Slack as well. Kerr comes back in, one back deep behind him, three wide receivers on the near side left. Snap is back, handoff goes straight up the middle, plowing his legs as he gets across the 25, but stood up there on the run for Southwestern is the big fullback, number 39 on the play, Dawson Gonzalez. Or excuse me, that was actually Devin Shaw who was in there. Thought the nine was a, or the two was a nine. <laughs> That's what the binoculars are for, partner. Right. So the running style too, just tuck it into the gut, plow up the middle. So third down and five to go for Southwestern, moving from right to left. Kerr, play action. Right side, throws in a tie pointed and brought in across the 35 by Anthony Stevens. Good enough for a first down. And Southwestern keeps the drive alive for the big third down conversion. Anthony Stevens needed all 6-2 and then a little extra on the hop to pull that thing down. Nearly sailed it over him, but the short pass able to inch them forward. 10-yard completion on the play as T.J. Hersey brings him down. Man across the formation in motion. Kerr fakes the handoff, looking right, throws, and it's just out of the reach of Shaw, who came sprinting out of the backfield. Second down coming up and 10 to go for the Blazers. Well, those passes where you try and use a little deception for Shaw, the guy you've been plugging it down the middle with, try and push him out of the backfield, get something over the top. Just sailed it a little beyond Shaw though. And really that motion has been what's working so far for the Pirates, kind of that misdirection. Richardson will line up in the Wildcat. They do have the quarterback out there, and it's bobbled. It's picked up, and now Richardson just trying to dive back ahead, but he's hauled down in the backfield by David Lewis, the six foot, 205 pound senior out of Moreo, Louisiana. So third down coming up. It's one of those plays where the sirens start going off in your head, right? You think you could lose five or 10 yards, but credit these Pirates for only losing about two on that play, and which was a Bosch snap. So third down and 12 coming up now. Coleman Kerr in the gun. Back to his right is Smith. Snap is back. They'll go with a misdirection handoff. Smith gets around one tackle, bounces off of another, and to the outside right, across the 40, and down across the 45 to the 47-yard line. That's all effort by Elijah Smith. They needed 12. He gets 14, and the Pirates get another big third-down conversion on the drive. And you know who puts together runs like that? Derrick Henry in the NFL. He trades helmet paint with you right down the middle. He bounces off you and takes another 20 yards. That's a great run by Smith to get the first down and more. So two big third down conversions by the Pirates on this drive as we move to four minutes left to go in the half, tied at seven. Out of the gun, play action, Kerr keeps it and he's ridden down. A little bit of a miscommunication in the backfield there, but blown up in the backfield by Carlton Brown, the Memphis, Tennessee native. A loss on the play of two, second down and 12. And again, that was one where Kerr held the ball out, looking to see if he was gonna hand it off and maybe hesitated, and by the time that he pulled it back, it was driven down in the backfield. Two wide receivers split either way. Handoff comes to the near side, it's Kassan Yaha sweeping towards the 50 across the 45, and ultimately shoved out of bounds close to the first down stick. Gonna be third down and one as on the near side. He's brought down by Corey Tolliver, or excuse me, run out of bounds. That's actually Seth Gaston who got him. Quickly, the Pirates go third down. It's pulled in by Kerr. He's shoved from behind, and he's going to be right at the sticks. We'll see where they measure that one, but from right behind, Devin Shaw just gave his quarterback a push. Try and get him the first down yardage, and he does. And I think, in a way, Kerr was kind of just shoved to the ground right there. I think he would have tried to 
at least tried to stay on his feet a little longer had he not been shoved, but he at least get the first down yardage out of it, so no harm, no foul. So another third down conversion, three consecutive for the Pirates on this drive as they churn out yardage. Kerr with a back to his left, it's Shaw. Two wide receivers either way, and the first timeout is used by Southwestern with 3.08 left to go here in the first half. Tied at seven between the Blazers and the Pirates. We'll be back in just a moment. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates Football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium. Tied at seven between the Bellhaven Blazers and the Southwestern Pirates. 3.08 left to go here in the first half. And the Pirates on the march. They've converted three straight third downs. They're in the Blazers' territory at the 42-yard line. Quarterback Coleman Kerr out of the gun. Shaw set deep behind him. Man across the formation in motion. Snap is back. It's a pitch the opposite way. Bradenberg trying to go that way, but it's blown up in the backfield as Shex Nader... Read that one perfectly from the edge and hauled down the sweeping slot receiver, David Brandenburg. Yeah, it was trying one of those plays again where you try and get the defense to go one way, you flip it to him, go the other way, and that time Brandenburg was just swarmed, tried to spin around, but was kind of converged on by four different guys. I think that's three out of the last four first downs that Southwestern has lost yardage on, but yet they've made up for it on their second and third down plays to keep this drive alive. They're looking at second down and 14 now, two and a half left to go in the first half. Snap is back, Castanaja sweeping towards the far sideline, and he's wrapped up as he gets to the 45-yard line and hauled down on the outside edge. David Lewis making the tackle, the weak side linebacker. And I like the Pirates' willingness to continue to try and go to Castanaja. He had the turnover earlier, but just from observing this offense, I think that he has some of the best breakout speed in that backfield. He has agility to go along with it, and if he breaks through on that sideline, he can go a long way. So now third down and 13 to go. Ball spotted on the 45-yard line. Snap is back, they'll fake the handoff. Kerr across the middle, it's hauled in by Brandenburg down to the 25 yard line and all the way to the 23. Big gain on the play for Southwestern. 21 yards and another third down conversion. And they've been hitting Brandenburg over the middle all game. He's able to get up and grab that football well over the 400 all-purpose yards mark now this season, close to 300 receiving yards on the season. So first down, a minute 25 left to go as the Pirates are just outside of the red zone on the 24-yard line. Kerr takes the snap, looking right side, throws that way, ball knocked down as the wide receiver got locked up on the outside edge there. Locked up on the outside edge with T.J. Hersey. But an incomplete pass stops the clock. Second down and 10. And I think Mitchell Wiberall, he was able to get a hand up as well. Maybe just not necessarily deflect the football, but kind of get in the throwing angle of Coleman and kind of obstruct his vision. Two wide receivers split either way on second down for Kerr. Stares into the defensive front. Man comes across the formation in motion. They'll fake it to him. Throw over the middle. Deflected and incomplete. Trying to hit Brandenburg again on that quick slant over the middle. And now third down and 10 coming up for Southwestern. Did a good job of delivering a strike in traffic right there. That quick slant, though, coming a little bit quicker than each of the last two passes over the middle to Bradenburg. And I think he was quite ready yet to put both hands up and try and snare it. So third down and 10 on the 24-yard line for Southwestern in Blazers territory. Brandenburg moves across the formation, now moves back the other way. Throw coming, and that one is hauled in at the 20-yard line. Brandenburg tried to spin out of a tackle, but he's brought down right there by Corey Tolliver, the 5'11", 191-pound freshman. And this will be the first fourth down of the drive for the Blazers after they converted, or for the Pirates after they converted four straight third downs. And with fourth down coming up here, 
on the 19-yard line. We'll see if they opt to go for it or try the field goal. Each team has missed one field goal attempt so far in the game. And it looks like the Pirates are going to let this clock bleed down. 24-second difference between game clock and play clock, and Southwestern's going to bring it all the way down to about 25 seconds, 24, and they call timeout. And now we'll see after they evaluate what it's going to look like if they want to take what looks like good points. Again, right now the ball on the 19-yard line, add another 7, what that's 26, 10, 36, so about a 36-yard field goal long this season uh, for Will Herbst is 39. So that's in his range. You want to try and get some points before halftime. Yeah, and I think you're considering, too, that Southwestern, they do get the ball to start the second half. So uh, maybe if maybe if you were kicking off in the second half to Bellhaven, then you try and air one out to the end zone and get, the, get that touchdown. But in this case, take that field goal, make a stop on the defensive side, and then get that ball right back in yeah, the second half. Going to look to take the points and run. We'll see what they're able to do. This is going to come from the near side hash, that's the left side from where we are, into a slight breeze. Will Herbst comes out, the Bernie Texas native, waits for the snap, the hold is down, the kick is blocked, the kick is blocked, it's spiraling around and ultimately fallen on by Southwestern, back at the 34 yard line, but TJ Hersey came off the edge and blocked the kick. So with 15 seconds left, the Blazers are going to take back over as they block a 36-yard attempt with 15 seconds left to go in the first half. And Hersey, the corner, with all that speed, just came flying off the far left corner. No one picked him up, and he was quickly in the backfield to, to block that punt. He had so, or the, the field goal, rather. He had so much momentum going that way. It's one where you worry about the guy blocking, picking up, and then taking it to the house. Luckily, Southwestern able to stop him, and... Grab the football, now try and get a quick defensive stop. Didn't get a hand on the ball. He got his, With his chest, chest on Yeah, he was right, right on top of it. Right off the 2-5. This looks like, we'll see if it's going to be a kneel down or if Bellhaven is going to take a shot. Asagunla is out of the shotgun for them. Again, the taller, more athletic quarterback. Snap is back, will fake the handoff, keep it himself, looking for a block, and has space across the 40. Stiff arms out of the man at the 45, and in the Southwestern Territory at the 43, and now Bellhaven will burn their last time out on the play. Tackle made by Josiah Minnenfield, finally bringing him down. Minnenfield did a good tackle right there. He was able to get hand on ball, and that's just... Good containment right there from Asim Gula to tuck the football after he realized that Minifield had a hand on it. Tried to strip it from him, but now Bellhaven just one about 10-yard play away or so from trying to kick that field goal and take the lead, but just seven seconds to go here. Well, what's tough, too, when you look at it for Southwestern, that drive that they had, that ended in the block field goal, 16 plays, ate up six minutes and 26 seconds, covered 60 yards, but again, ultimately, they are left without points. As it's a blocked field goal, and then Asagunla on the rush, a big burst right up the middle. They've got it down as negative nine yards. I think they put in the wrong 42 on the game day <laughs> tracker. So we'll see what the full yardage is for that one. But a big play coming up here. McKeechern out of the shotgun. You would assume this is probably going to be the Hail Mary attempt right here. It may be a quick out to the sideline. McKeechern out of the gun. Rolling to his left, under pressure, throws back across to his right. It's a jump ball, and it's caught by Caradine, but he is ridden down at the 11-yard line, and time is going to expire in the first half. We have hit halftime here in Jackson, Mississippi. It's the Southwestern Pirates 7 and the Bellhaven Blazers 7. When we come back, we'll get you all of the numbers for the first half, recap this one, and also take a look at scores from around the ASC. All of that when the halftime show comes your way in a moment. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates Football on SHN Sports.
Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. Halftime between the Southwestern Pirates and the Bellhaven Blazers tied at seven. Garrett Green with you here. Andrew Chapman is alongside. We take a look back at the first half summary. And for the Southwestern Pirates defense, started off great for them. A three and out against Bellhaven. They gained just two yards as they were backed up inside of their own end zone. And then Southwestern, uh, they ultimately, though, have just a three-play drive where they gained four yards and punt the ball back to Bellhaven. The Blazers went on their lone scoring drive of the half. They went six plays, 75 yards. It was capped off by a 19-yard rushing touchdown by Brad Foley. It was his fifth rushing touchdown of the year and his eighth overall touchdown for the Bellhaven Blazers. They had a 7-0 lead. Southwestern, uh, they had a response. They ended up going on a 9-play, 62-yard drive, but it ended in a missed field goal. So Bellhaven took back over. Uh, but the Southwestern defense did what they needed to do, forced a three and out, just one play, or just one yard gained on that drive. And the Pirates get the ball back just on the other side of midfield, take it 50 yards. A big play on that one was a 41-yard reception by Jeremiah Richardson from the quarterback Coleman Kerr. That got down to the 9-yard line, and then Elijah Smith, two rushes, and ultimately a 5-yard rush to get into the end zone. And just like that, the Southwestern Pirates tied it up at 7 all. Now, there were a few more scoring opportunities in this game. Uh, Bellhaven had a long drive, six plays, 51 yards. They got down to first down and goal to go from the five-yard line, but a couple of plays, a couple of penalties, and some good defensive effort as well ultimately backed up uh, the Blazers, and they were forced to try a long field goal that was off of the upright and ended uh, in a missed field goal, so Southwestern took back over. Uh, the Pirates then went on a very long drive, 16 plays, 60 yards. They completed four third down attempts, uh, but ultimately got to fourth down and tried a 36-yard field goal. It was blocked, though, by Bellhaven with about 25 seconds left to go in the first half. The Blazers got a long gain uh, from their quarterback, Mario Asagunla, but ultimately Hunter McEachern trying a Hail Mary from just on the other side of midfield. Didn't quite get the ball all the way to the end zone, and we go to the halftime, go to halftime at 7 all. When we come back, we will take a look at other scores from around the ASC, get you updated. A, a smaller slate of games today, just two other games outside of ours, but we'll touch on those, and we will also get your first half stats. All of that when we continue here with the Halftime Show on SHN Sports. Uh, 
Welcome back to Bellhaven Bull Stadium. Halftime between the Southwestern Pirates and the Bellhaven Blazers, even at seven as we go to halftime. Garrett Green with you here. Andrew Chapman is alongside. We take a look at other scores from around the ASC today. Just two other games outside of us. East Texas Baptist taking on Mary Harden Baylor. Of course, Mary Harden Baylor in the news this week as they had their 2016 National Championship uh, stripped away from them. The reason being, we might talk about that in the second half. Uh, we don't want to criticize the NCAA, but the reasoning is, uh, well, interesting to say the least. Let, let us put it this way. Not an egregious offense, uh, but we might touch a little bit on that. As for the football that's on the field right now, Mary Harden Baylor kicking off against East Texas Baptist at, at 2 o'clock, so they're only about 15 minutes into that game. Uh, just five minutes going on the game clock, but East Texas Baptist already has a 7 nothing lead over Mary Harden Baylor, the number one ranked team in all of D3. Meanwhile, Louisiana College and Texas Lutheran, they will get going at 6 o'clock this evening. That's it. That's all of the ASC action that we have for you coming up right here. Uh, Andrew is back with us, and Andrew, you want to take a look at uh, first half stats from this one for uh, both the Blazers and the Pirates. Yeah, Garrett, so for Southwestern, uh, both teams tied at 7-7 after the first half. Southwestern, 10 first downs to the uh, Bellhaven, 11. The big difference overall, though, was the, uh, the penalty yardage coming for uh, Bellhaven. We mentioned some of those drive-killing penalties. Five penalties for 57 total yards in the first half. That was a big difference maker and probably is one of the big keys as to why we are still tied at 7-7 right now. As for Southwestern, they were uh, much more um, you know, they were, they were, they were much more uh, keen to not getting the penalties in the, in the first half, just two yards uh, for, for ten, two penalties for 10 yards in total. The rushing yards, 20 attempts for Southwestern, 83 total yards, 16 for 98 for Bellhaven. And I think if all holds up in the second half, we're going to see uh, more run game from both sides. There were some effective runs from each side. We'll probably see uh, yardage up in the triple digits in, in the rushing game today. As for passing yards, 133 in total for Southwestern, 100 167 in all for uh, Bellhaven. Total yardage, uh, 35 plays for 216 yards for the Pirates. As for Bellhaven, 31 plays, 265 yards. So both these offenses uh, pretty even right now. And you look at some of that total yardage, time of possession as well, 15 minutes, 21 seconds for uh, Southwestern, 14.39 for Bellhaven. So really it was that one big long drive towards the end of the second half, I'd say, where Southwestern wasn't able to get points out of it because of the block field goal, but they ate up a big chunk of time. They've controlled the, uh, the, the offense for the majority of this game, and now we'll see who can really put up some big yardage in the second half or maybe get a few more stops. Yeah, five for nine on third downs right there for Southwestern. Meanwhile, Bellhaven just two for seven. Uh, big gainers in this one, Austin Castanaja, uh, three rushes for 46 yards. His long was 33. Elijah Smith, five rushes for 29 yards at a touchdown averaging 5.8 yards per carry. Uh, Coleman Kerr, 8 for 15 for 133 yards. No touchdowns, but no interceptions. Uh, was sacked once, 41 yards. On the other side of things, um, Hunter McKeachern, 9 for 14 for 153 yards. Had a 57-yard completion. Again, it was a swing pass to Foley. Uh, has not thrown a touchdown. Sacked once. As for Foley, 6 rushes for 32 yards and a touchdown. Uh, McKe uh, McKeachern, 4 rushes for 31 yards. So that's an average of 6.5 yards a carry. A guy who was only averaging about 2.5 coming into today. Receiving yards, Lamar is Carradine, three receptions for 52 yards. Colby Blunt, three receptions for 33. Uh, Brad Foley, obviously the one reception for 57 yards. And Mario Asagunla, two receptions for 24 yards. On the other side of things for Southwestern, uh, David Brandenburg, four receptions for 66 yards. Kasanyaha, two receptions for 16. Uh, ben Brockman is what's listed here. That's not correct. That is actually uh, Jeremiah Richardson, the other 20. He has one catch for 41 yards. Uh, and then Anthony Stevens, a big uh, third down conversion, one catch for 10 yards so far today. Th those are your first half stats. We will step aside for just a little bit. We'll leave you with the Bellhaven Blazers band, and then we'll be back to get you all set for the second half, tied at seven between the Blazers and the Pirates. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates Football on SHN Sports.
Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium here in Jackson, Mississippi, the capital of the Magnolia State. Halftime coming to a close, tied at seven between Bellhaven and Southwestern. Alongside Andrew Chapman, Garrett Green with you here, Nathan Height spending the dials today and keeping up with our school board, and Mickey Holden, our great camera operator today. All right, Andrew, we took a look at it. We gave you some of the first half stats. Southwestern actually able to move the ball through the air pretty well there in the first half. They netted 133 passing yards, five for nine on third down. So they'll see if they can carry that momentum into the second half where they are going to receive the ball to start the second half. Yeah, and you got to like what you're seeing so far out of Coleman Kerr, eight for 15, 133 total yards. And the big stat to keep an eye on that – so Southwestern has to try and continue in the second half is that five for nine on third down conversion. They've been able to extend drives. They've missed a field goal, had one block. So try and come away with at least a few points when you put together those good drives in the second half. Three missed field goals between the two teams so far. Yep. No missed extra points, though. Yep. That's the one that matters. But uh, no, indeed. Well, it will be the Pirates to receive in their white jerseys. They'll be moving from right to left to start the second half here on a gorgeous day. In Jackson, Mississippi, 66 degrees. It is certainly fall now here in the south. Right-footed kick is away from Cade Ganey. Back to receive Castanaja. He fumbles a little bit but recovers across the 20. He's got some blockers at the 30 but is driven down at the 31-yard line. Hauled down from behind by Zachary Hammett, the six-foot linebacker for the Blazers. And as a result, Southwestern will take over at the 31-yard line. Austin Yaha, big offensive contributor in that first half, up above 60 all-purpose yards. So keep feeding the fast guy. See what he can do in the second half, try and get you some more big plays. Austin Yaha, the 5'9", 185-pound sophomore out of Winston Churchill High School in San Antonio, Texas. So now an eye formation. Oh, this is new. Here is Slack from under center, pitches it, sweeping out towards the right side, looking for the edge and getting it across the 30, down to the 40 and tumbling down as he gets across the 45 yard line on the outside edge right there for Southwestern. Good gainer on the outside edge by, looks like Kalen Heim who is back now, the Alvarado, Texas native. We was wondering if we were gonna see him in at running back at all and Kalen Heim Comes away with a good rush there. 5'11 junior getting started early on the far sideline. So now this is going to be a pitch to Shaw running the opposite side. Left gets around one tackler across the 50 and is ultimately escorted out of bounds on the far side across the 45. No, they'll give him the 46, so a gain of nine on the play by Devin Shaw. But now this is a different look in the second half for Southwestern as they've come out of the, out of the eye formation and running more of a true power run game early on. Pitch to the right, pitch to the left, and a couple of big bruising running backs trying to pick up some early yardage for you to get things started. Keep using that ground and pound game. 14-yard game by High, nine-yard game by Shaw. So Slack from under center, two backs behind him. Smith is the deep back, it's a straight pitch, dives across the middle and has extra running room across the 30, still fighting on his feet all the way down to the 20-yard line. Give him a gain of 26 on the play on just a straight pitch to Elijah Smith. Long gain in Southwestern, eating up chunks of yardage, coming out in a different look here in the second half. Well, this is a really good look right now. Three rushes, all with different guys picking up big yardage. Shaw, Smith, and then he mixed with what we saw in the first play as well. Timeout, though. And just like that, Bellhaven burns an early timeout because of the different look that Southwestern has shown them. And, you know, I have to wonder if that's an adjustment the offense made in the second half. Look, we talked about it. J.J. Slack is used to running that wing T offense. That's one where you line up under center. You don't normally run the wing T out of the shotgun. They put him under center, have the linemen put their hand on the ground, drive forward, and they've gone with three different running backs. They've all gained chunk yardage there. Long run by Elijah Smith of 26 yards right there. Coleman Kerr has shown an ability to complete the pass in the first half, and... Now you just exemplify that run game here early on, and I think it has caught in Bellhaven a little bit by surprise in the early going. So we saw them burn a couple of timeouts in the first half when they didn't want to. Now here early on, they lose another. And really, you feel like those second half timeouts are more the, important the real than those first ones. half timeouts. So a burned timeout there. Slack under center. I formation. Pitch will go to the outside. It's time, and he's going to be bottled up and pushed out of bounds. 
combination on the play by Isaiah Blackman was the first one there, and then finished off on the outer edge by Fazian Locke, the sophomore from Mobile. See if the pattern continues. Heim, Shaw, Smith, and back to Heim. So perhaps we'll have a trio of running backs trying to pick up some big yardage today now for the uh, the Pirates, and they're going to find themselves up over 100 rushing yards now. Well, Shaw comes back into the huddle. Gain of, we'll call it two on the play. It's second down and eight. And again, another eye formation look here for Southwestern as Slack goes under center. Pitches it, trying to sweep towards the far side left is Shaw looking to stay behind his blockers, hand into their back, and moves across the 15 down towards the 14-yard line. So a gain of four on the play brings up third down and manageable for Southwestern. So third down and four coming up here. Inside of the red zone, ball spotted on the near side hash on the 14-yard line. Two minutes gone by in the first half, opening drive for Southwestern, tied at seven with Bellhaven. Snap is back, Slack pitches it. Smith looking to move through the middle, pushes into the pile. That's gonna be close right at the 10-yard line, and that should be good for another first down. It is, so he'll pick up a four on the play. And the Pirates convert with the power run game on a four-yard gash by Elijah Smith. And sure enough, there is the pattern going on right now. All three of those running backs have each gotten a hand or two handoffs in this half, all in the same order. So we'll see what they try and go with here. Perhaps with the first down, you air one out, see what you can do. Or, heck, the running game's been working for you right now. Well, Heim is back in, and now yeah. Bellhaven is going to stack the box. One wide receiver split either way. Snap is back. Slack goes to Heim, and now starts lead blocking towards the outside edge. A flag is thrown as Heim dives for the pylon on the far sideline. He's out at the three-yard line, but a flag is down. And it looks like this is going to be a holding penalty against Southwestern. Yeah, it might have been slack over there on the edge, just trying to hold that man off for Heim. I don't know if they gave a designation on the number. Got to love that, though. The quarterback makes the pitch, and then he also is a lead blocker. That's efficient offense right there. But unfortunately, the 10-yard penalty will back Southwestern back to the 20-yard line. So first and goal from the 20 now for Southwestern. Opening drive of the second half, tied at seven against Bellhaven. Here in Jackson, Mississippi. Deep back set is Devin Shaw, the senior. Snap is back to Slack, fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Southpaw over the middle, it's tipped and incomplete, and a late hit on Anthony Stevens, who was left exposed as he went up, but it's incomplete, and brings up second down and 20. First time we've seen J.J. Slack try and air it out so far in this game. He's been a runner. He's been handing off the ball. He's made some tackles on special teams. He really is the southwestern version of Taysom Hill. Don't say that. It's a Longhorn <laughs> fan. I have flashbacks to BYU from a couple of years ago. Now it's second down and goal from the 20. Slack fakes the pitch, keeps it himself, but he's drug down from behind. Big left-handed paw in there from right in the middle of the defense as grabbing up and snagging him was the sophomore Colton Strain. Blew that one up, gain of a couple, but third down and goal to go from the 18 now for Southwestern. Content with keeping slack out there, giving Coleman Kerr a chance to rest that arm, get a breather on the sidelines. See now if they do try and air one out to the end zone though. Nonetheless, you have to try and get a field goal at the very least. One wide receiver split out to the far side left. Snap is back. Pitch will go to Smith, trying to find an avenue behind his blockers. Keeps the legs churning as he gets across the 15, down towards the 14-yard line. But that's going to be it, so it'll bring up fourth down and goal to go with the ball on the 14-yard line. And the Pirates will attempt the field goal here. A couple of these really solid drives where they went almost the length of the field in the first half for Southwestern. Ended in a missed field goal and then a blocked field goal. So we'll try and get three here and get that first lead of the game. Ball going to come down on the 20. So this is going to be a 30-yard field goal attempt. As the snap is back, the hold is down. It's a side-winding kick towards the uprights, and it is good. Will Herbst knocks it in from 30 yards, and the Pirates take their first lead of the game. Just about five minutes gone by in the second half. It's the Southwestern Pirates 10 and the Bellhaven Blazers 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports.
Welcome back to Bellhaven Bull Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates get a 30-yard field goal from Will Herbst, and they go up 10-7. Gary Green with you here. Andrew Chapman is alongside. Assistance as well from Nathan Height and Mickey Holden today, our SHN crew. So now the Pirates with their first lead of the ball game. As Herbst will put his left foot into this one, a spiraling kick and a fair catch called for and hauled in inside of the 20, so that should bring the ball back out to the 25-yard line with the fair catch rules. Drive for Southwestern ends in a field goal, and that was a lot of great running there as we saw a different look from the Pirates to come out in a true I-formation set and really ride J.J. Slack that entire way. So obviously a halftime adjustment there, and it worked out for the Pirates. Yeah, and how about the trio of running backs getting involved as well early on in that drive? That's what got you the big chunks of yardage early on. Devin Shaw, Liza Smith, Heim as well. All three of those guys putting together solid carries. Didn't see Kalon Heim in the first half, so he comes out now. Now we see McEachern under center for the first time and just tries to push forward in the middle of the pile. And that's a gain of two on the play. That's a first down quarterback sneak from under center. I haven't seen McEachern do a whole lot of that. Usually if he tries to use those legs, he'll quickly bail out of the pocket, go to the sideline, that time trying to be the bruising quarterback. By the way, for the Pirates, that drive, 10 plays, 56 yards, eating up four minutes and 17 seconds off of the clock. Now McEachern operates out of the shotgun again, facing into the three-man front for the Pirates, fakes the handoff, will keep it himself, runs up the middle, where he's brought down as he gets across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Combination tackle on the play by Addison Wheeler and Evan Villastrigo, the sophomore safety. Pickup of seven on the play, brings up third down and one. Quickly going, McEachern has it, fakes the handoff, throwing right side, and behind Asagunla, incomplete. Pressure from the outside edge by Hayden Smith, but it turns into a very quick three and out for Bellhaven, and they will punt from deep inside of their own territory. Well, both opening drives in each half for Bellhaven has been a whole lot of nothing. Quick three and outs, and for McEachin, after a couple of rushes, tried to open up that play action, but couldn't find anything. So now, back deep to punt will be the freshman, Andrew Norton. Waiting back at his own 20, receives the ball, sends the right foot. This is a booming end over end kick that'll be called in at the 28 yard line. So that is where Southwestern will take back over, leading 10 to seven with 9.28 left to go here in the third quarter. And Andrew, I'm a little confused by what the Blazers were thinking on that first down play in that drive. Quarterback sneak where the quarterback just burrows right under to the center. You're, you're not looking to bust anything right there, so that, that really ends up hurting you a little bit on that drive. Yeah, I think you're just something where you're expecting to get a little bit more yardage, but it was kind of a strange play, almost a goal line play that they put together and kind of stalled out that drive from the get-go. Well, Slack has the snap, pitches it to Shaw, going towards the right side, pushes off a defender, but is ultimately upended as he gets across the 30, down to the 33-yard line. Pick up a five on the play, brought down by a whole host of green shirts on the outside edge, but Colton Strain was right in the middle of it. The nose tackle stretching to the outside edge, and it's second down, and it'll actually be six coming up here for the Pirates. And given those Southwestern fans over there on the far side, a little bit of a show right in front of them, and how about the travel out here? A lot of uh, black and gold out there, so I'm tailgating in the parking lot before the game. They come in bunches. They have traveled for sure. Another pitch, this time it's Smith, Wheeling to the outside edge, he puts his foot on the ground and is shoved out as he gets to the far sideline. Uh, final tackle made on the play by Seth Gatson. And it's a gain of six on the play right at the stick to the 38 yard line and that's gonna be a first down for Southwestern. Really enjoyed watching Elijah Smith grab the rock and just take it as far as he can until someone tells him to stop in this game. Yards after contact continue to come for Smith and he's the bruiser of that running back group. So first down and 10 to go. Pirates leading 10 to seven, 8.30 left to go here in the third quarter here in Belha here against Bellhaven. First pitch, that goes back to Heim, slices back inside before he stood up at the 44 yard line and driven back. Isaiah Blackman, the junior linebacker, making the tackle. But another gain on first down of six yards for Kalon Heim, who did not start this game. 
Yeah, Heim though, not showing that he was cold in the first half. He came on, busted up a run early on, first play of the half, and it's led to more yardage for the big running back, kind of sidestepping his way before he was met by Blackman. High formation, deep back is Shaw. They'll pitch it to him, looking for some running space. Slips through and is still on his feet as he gets to the 40. Down the sideline, slides out of a tackle at the 20 to the 15, stumbling, and he's brought down at the three-yard line. Brought down by Blackman from behind, but a long play of 48 yards, and the Pirates will go up-tempo to the goal line. First down and goal from the two. Waiting for the chains to move up and reset. Already under center, Slack is ready to go. Receives the handoff, Burrows up the middle and into the end zone for a Pirates touchdown. J.J. Slack, the fifth quarterback on the depth chart, comes in and pushes in for the two yard touchdown and the Pirates have converted each of their first two drives of the second half. They're an extra point away from going up by 10. Well, we hear Joe Austin talk about it pregame, trying to find those legends in the group, the guys who are gonna step up and make a name for themselves in this game. How about that group of running backs who continue to bust off big yardage in this game? JJ Slack's been the Swiss Army knife, knife of the offense and now they're up big. Snap is back, hold is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.34 left to go in the third quarter. It's the Southwestern Pirates 17 and the Bellhaven Blazers 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bull Stadium here in Jackson, Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates convert both of their drives to start off the third quarter. They now have a 17 to seven lead over the Blazers as Will Herbst, who knocked in a 30 yard field goal to get the first score. As this one teed up at the 35, left foot in, end over end kick. That's gonna be let go and will bounce out of the back of the end zone for a touchback in Southwestern. Andrew, they made some adjustments there at the half and it has paid off for them in a big way here in the second half. Well, I think they saw the effective run game in the first half and said, all right, let's just amplify it. And they have been running Bellhaven to death so far in the second half. How about that massive run by Devin Shaw, opened up by a couple of other guys in Heim and Elijah Smith. And it's been a 100 yard game for Shaw. 55 yards on that run all the way down to the two. That turns in to a five play 72 yard drive that took a minute 41 off the clock for Southwestern to go up by 10. So we'll see what the response is now as Bellhaven starts on their own 25 yard line. Hunter McKeecher in the quarterback out of the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, rolling right under pressure, sets up a screen, but it's in and out of the belly of the intended wide receiver, Gabe Wilson. Break up on the play made by Garrick Womack, who is spread out wide in his zone. It's second and 10. Yeah, Womack putting the pressure on the quarterback over there, which really led to the quick pass in the flat and then the swarm. And so far in this second half, Southwestern's done exactly what one of the keys was going into this game and putting pressure on McKeecher and making him uneasy in the pocket. Really get him off of his spot is what you're looking to do. One back on either side for McKeecher and on second down, claps the hands, receives the ball, hands it off, sweeping left side, but hauled down as he gets to the original line of scrimmage on the sweeping play on the outside is Josh Martin, the freshman running back out of Semis, Alabama. And third down and 10 coming up now for Bellhaven. So third down coming up here for the Blazers. One wide receiver to the long side of the field right. Now they'll spread out Martin wide as well in the slot. McEachern with a back to his left. 
takes the snap. Looking left side, lobs this ball. It's hauled in by Foley. Now he's got to try and dance and make something happen. Gets to the sideline, and the ball comes out. The ball pops out. And we'll see if this is the runner down or if the Pirates take over. Regardless, uh, they're going to say that yeah, Foley held on to it, I believe. say he held on to it, and so instead, though, it's just a gain of two on the play. Good swarming tackling by the Pirates' defense to force another three and out, and they'll get the ball back with good field position here with 6.15 left to go in the third quarter. So back deep to kick it is Andrew Norton. Takes the snap chest high, spins the ball over, and booms this one. Kind of a lame duck that'll be made. A fair catch. It's bobbled but fallen on at the 41-yard line on the outer edge, and that is where Southwestern will take over yet again. Going back to that last play, the third down play, and Brad Foley, I think he was just kind of upended down on the far sideline. That's what led to the big sideline reaction, and then as he hit the ground, that ball may have, might have come loose. So no fumble on the play, but aggressive defense played by Southwestern. Also a bit of a floating pass into the flat to Foley that, he had to wait on and wait for that ball to come down and allow the Southwestern defense to converge and quickly make a tackle. So now first down and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Slack pitches the ball. Back is Smith, and he'll be met in the backfield by the nose tackle Colton Strain and ridden down for a loss of one. Strain has been all over this game. We've seen him making tackles on the outside edge. He's probably been the most consistent name that we've called, and he hauls down the running back Smith for a loss of one. Running games allowing J.J. Slack to stay in the game as well, giving him kind of a leaf quarterbacking role here in the second half. But really all he's been doing is handing off the ball and watching his runners go to work. Well, and after running exclusively out of the shotgun in the first half, it's all I formation right now. Play action. Slack looking to take a shot over the middle. It's hauled in at the 45-yard line by David Brandenburg, the senior. That's good for a pickup on the play of 16 yards and a first down for Southwestern. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you can take wide receiver on the depth chart, put a little slash mark and write QB right next to J.J. Slack because he's showing he can sling it. That's what he did in high school, and the lefty put a dart right through a window and completed that pass. Well, that's exactly what you're looking to do. Wear down the defense with body blows up the middle and then pop one over the top and they're able to do that. Brandenburg with another reception and it's good for another Pirates first down. So now Slack under center takes the snap, pitch, that's Heim looking for a running lane but he is slung back in the backfield yet again it's Colton Strain right back in the middle. We're, we're not getting lazy up here, he's just right there blowing up some of these inside runs right now for Bellhaven against Southwestern. Yeah, six feet, 245, just a sophomore. He'd get a little bit bigger as his Bellhaven career continues, and he was out there in the backfield quickly. First time they've really shut down a rushing play so far for Southwestern in the half. Carlton Brown also combining on the tackle as well. So it brings up second down and 12. Pirates leading 17 to seven with 4.10 left to go in the third quarter. Out of the eye formation, Slack the quarterback, the deep back is Shaw. The pitch will go to him, running right side, crashing down Bellhaven, but Smith is able to, or Shaw, excuse me, is able to get to the outside edge before he's ultimately pushed out of bounds on the outside edge by Mitchell Wibriol, the freshman from South Haven, Mississippi. Same kind of uh, rush there where he was able to take it 55 yards his last time around. Just cuts out to the flat, goes to the far sideline, hopes to pick up a couple of blockers, and then toe tap his way along, but everything kind of closed up on him. Still able to get a yard or two, though. Southwestern now up to 220 yards rushing in this game. They're averaging 6.1 a carry at this point. It's really skewed in their favor here in the second half. Slack under center on third down and nine. Play action, looking over the middle, now throws right side. It's in and out of the belly of the wide receiver, Anthony Stevens. Coverage on the play by T.J. Hersey. And that'll bring up fourth down and nine to go for Southwestern. We've seen them come out as it looks like there's a flag down on the play, and we're going to get holding against the Pirates. Declined, though, by Bellhaven. So we'll see if this brings out the punt team for Southwestern, and indeed it will. Yeah, it looked like there was a little bit of grabbing down there on the far sideline by T.J. Hersey. J.J. Slack put that ball in a solid spot for his receiver on a on a comeback curl route, 
And Hersey might have pulled the arm back a little bit of the intended receiver, but no flag. Instead, the, the holding penalty. And if you're Bellhaven, just let him punt it away. So now only the third time today that we're seeing Victor Winfield out to punt for the Pirates. Waits, takes the snap, and puts his right foot into this one. Spiraling kick, back towards the five, fair catch called for, it bounces up at the five, and it's knocked down at the four yard line. Give the native of Denmark a golden star for that one. Dropped it down like he had a pitching wedge inside of the five, and that's where the Blazers will take over with 3.18 left to go in the third, with the Pirates leading by 10. Yeah, I got to see him with some of his kicker practice uh, pregame, and he was just lofting up there for his guys. They were enjoying receiving those kicks, and that gets the friendly bounce right there. A pro punt coming from the Pirate. Goes down as a 38-yard kick, but that's all you can ask for right there as they're actually going to give that at the 7-yard line. So first down and 10, and Asagunla is going to be the quarterback, the 6-4 QB. Out of the shotgun, one back to his left. Stares into the six-man front for the Pirates. Snap is back, fakes the handoff. Trying to move to the outside left, but he's bottled up and driven down at the two-yard line. About seven Pirates combining on the tackle, but right in the middle of it all for Southwestern was the middle linebacker, Chris Crawford. So a loss of five yards on the quarterback keeper by Asagunla. And it's second down and 15 to go with the ball on the two-yard line. And now, for this Pirates defense, you might smell blood. Yeah, and if with Asangula still in the game, he has not passed a lot. He's in the shotgun. I think you want to bring the house here because he might be trying to run the ball. Out of the gun, one back to his right. Snap is back. Handoff will go. And brought down right at the goal line is Foley as he carries it through. Nicholas Smith, the senior defensive end, hauling him down. But it's a gain of, well, it's no gain on the play, actually a loss of one, so third and 16 on the one yard line. And right now, if you're Bellhaven, it's probably a situation where you don't feel comfortable passing the ball, so you're just gonna try and run it a couple of yards and then punt it away and see what you can do on the defensive end. But they are right on that goal line. So Asagunla, the 6'4", 217 junior, a native of Jackson, out of the shotgun, one back to his right. Snap is back, hands it off, stutter step, fully wrapped up as he tried to slide away. And right there, it's Garrett Womack to bring him down. Defensive end out of Lake Travis, and it'll be fourth down after a gain of three on the play. And Bellhaven is going to have to punt this one from out of their own end zone. And there's going to not be a lot of room right now for their punter to try and get it away. You can get a guy rushing off of the edge and try and get through without a blocker. You have a real chance to try and block this football. This is a special team's dream right now. It's one of the keys we talked about in pregame. Win that special team's battle, a chance to do so with a big play right here. So with his heels on the back of the end zone, the freshman punter Andrew Norton awaits the snap. Has it, right-footed kick, it's away, coming towards the near sideline. That's going to bounce at the 30 and go out of bounds at the 30, right at the 30-yard line. Well, you talk about a short field, this is about as good of starting field position as Southwestern has had in this ball game. They'll take over, leading by 10 with a minute four left to go in the third. Yeah, best field position they've had so far. That's as good as an interception, really, if you're, if you're thinking about it. Guys are up against their own end zone. Say they air it out, you pick the ball, That's you're going to be about on the 30-yard line. So a punt deep in the end zone works just about the same. And for Southwestern, you're one play away from being in field goal range, but you're thinking end zone all the way. It's not going to show up in the box score, but Victor Winfield deserves a little bit of credit for where this drive is starting right now mm -hmm. for the Pirates pinning the Blazers inside of the five. Pitches back, runs straight up the middle, and hauled down as he gets five yards down to the 25-yard line is Jeremiah Richardson. So we talked about that stable of three running backs. Go ahead and add a fourth in as Richardson dives ahead for five, brings up second down and five to go. Probably one more play for Southwestern here in this third quarter, leading 17-7. to Pirates have converted two of their three drives in this quarter for points. Three and outs for the Blazers. Snap is back, moving to his left. No pitches there. And so just falling forward for a gain of one on the play is the quarterback, J.J. Slack. He ran one way. Everyone else ran the other. And Demetrius Brokenberry 
brings him down for a gain of only one. Yeah, overall, the communication on the offensive end has been real solid today for the Pirates. That might have been the first real broken play or perhaps a miscommunication. It was Slack looking like he was trying to find an option, but unfortunately his option, Kalen Heim, went the opposite way. Well, that's going to do it for the third quarter. We go to the fourth. It's the Southwestern Pirates 17 and the Bellhaven Blazers 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium here in Jackson, Mississippi, the capital of Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates leading the Blazers 17-7 as we start the fourth quarter. And Southwestern is going to start the ball with a third down and five from the 25-yard line. The quarterback, J.J. Slack, under center, running out of an I formation. Snap is back. The pitch is going to go to Shaw. Sweeping towards the near side. Has some blockers. First down at the 20, 15, and shoved out of bounds inside of the 10, all the way down to the seven-yard line. So on third down and five, Southwestern ends up getting 17 yards on the play and good for a first down to start off the fourth quarter. So now first and goal coming up from the seven for Southwestern. So now it's first down and goal. Pitches back, going straight ahead, Smith, but he's bottled up as he gets to the outside edge and drugged down by David Lewis. Gain of three on the play, brings up second and goal. Those offensive rushing yards just continue to pile up for Southwestern, and it has been all Southwestern since the half. Big shout out to Devin Shaw and what he's been able to do in the rush game today. So now a second down and goal from the two yard line for Southwestern leading 17 to seven just underway here in the fourth quarter. Again out of the eye formation, slack under center. The deep back is Jeremiah Richardson. Communicates with his leading fullback. And now back under center, slack. Takes the snap, pitch, right side, looking for a hole, Richardson. He's bottled up and slung down for no gain by Carlton Brown, the freshman. And it's third and goal now. Actually a loss of a yard from the three yard line. First time we've called Brown's name so far today. Ninth solo tackle on the season for him. 255, just a freshman, big guy on the line. Native of Memphis, Tennessee out of North Point Christian School. So a big third down here, Southwestern, with the way the defense has played in this second half, could really put this one closer to out of reach here. Out of the gun, Slack, pitches, Heim, trying to work towards the outside corner, at the 10 to the five, puts his head down and dives to the three as he's driven out of bounds on the far sideline. Combination tackle of Corey Tolliver on the play. And so it'll be fourth down and four to go. And we'll see if Southwestern opts to go for it or bring out the field goal unit. Slack is still out there, so it looks like the Pirates are going to go for it on fourth down. And J.J. Slack, he does it all. He just laid down a big block that allowed Heim to get a couple of extra yards down the line after he was being swarmed by three guys. Slack eliminated one of them, crept them a little closer to the end zone. Devin Shaw is the deep back. Fourth down and goal from the three. Snap is back. Pitch to Shaw, looking for a lane and strolls into the end zone, standing up for the Pirates touchdown. Great blocking on the outside edge as Devin Shaw takes it in for the touchdown. And Southwestern now leading by three scores. 23 to seven with the extra point coming. Just a massive day for the Pirates. Offensive rushing effort today. Devin Shaw with that first TD of the season. That one's gotta feel real good. 
along with Elijah Smith as well. It's been a running back party and now a massive lead in the fourth. So now Herbst on for the extra point. Snap is back, hold is down, the kick is up. It is deflected, but it is good. Slips through the uprights, and with 12.47 left to go in the ballgame, it's the Southwestern Pirates 24 and the Bellhaven Blazers 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium on the campus of Bellhaven University in Jackson, Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates, we were tied at seven at the half. They have come out, they have scored points on three of their four drives in the second half, including a pair of touchdowns as Devin Shaw punctuated that one on a fourth down and goal from three yards out to score his first touchdown of the year. Will Herbst puts his foot into this one, spiraling kick back towards the five yard line that is hauled in across the 10 down to the 15 and brought down as he gets the 25 yard line on the return for Bellhaven is Brad Foley, the junior running back and kick returner. So that is where Bellhaven will start and Andrew for as good as Southwestern has been on offense, really you have to give the Pirates defense a ton of credit for what they've done in the second half. Nothing but three and outs and nothing but negative yards on the last drive for the Blazers. Yeah, you'd mentioned the uh, the Southwestern uh, kicker as well, helping out in the cause. Winfeld pinning them deep in the end zone in their pass drive. And now if you're Southwestern, you're one more defensive stop away from really feeling like you might have this thing. McEachern throws it right side. That's hauled in by Asagunla, and he's shoved out of bounds on the outside there by Joseph Minifield. Uh, that was kind of a wide receiver screen to the outside edge. All the offensive line just cut block right there. But a gain of five, call it seven on the play, brings up second down and three. McEachern out of the gun, lobbing one. Down the far sideline, it's Asim Gula, and it's off his hands, incomplete. Had a step on Minifield on the near sideline, but he's unable to haul it in, and it's third down. Asim Gula, after being the quarterback for most, most of the third quarter, out there with a chance to catch a deep ball, and then he's probably gone if he makes that catch. That's a ball you got to pull in. He was kind of looking over his shoulder, had to reach above the helmet, but he had two hands on it. Wind has died down here in the stadium on a great afternoon. 69 degrees here in Jackson, Mississippi. Fall is upon us, and right now the Pirates looking to hold on a third down and three on defense. McEachern out of the gun. Blitz coming. Throws right side. Asangula brings it in and is shoved out of bounds by the quarterback, Minnenfield, but that's enough for a first down on the game to the 38 yard line. Called the 39. Minifield got an arm in there, but strength of Asim Gula able to wrap the arms around it and contain the football. McEachern, play action. Looking right side, throws underneath, it's caught, but immediately wrapped up by Damian Dawson and driven down as it's hauled in there on the far sideline by the wide receiver LaMarcus Carradine, the six foot, 187 pound senior out of Euphora, Mississippi. So a gain of five on the play, second and five. McEachern takes the snap, looking left side, goes that way, it's hauled in by the fullback on the play, Wilson, but he's brought down after a gain of only about one, and now a late flag coming in on the play. Flag right in the middle of the field at the offensive line. And we'll see the call. And it's a personal foul against Bellhaven. And, well, based on the slap on the helmet, that's going to go against the center, Tanner Holly, who just got a big old smack by one of his fellow offensive linemen. So a 15-yard penalty turns it from third down and four to third down and 19 now for Bellhaven. Yeah, Kendrian Boltman was the guy who smacked Tanner Hawley in the back of the helmet. 
Kind of like a what you thinking, man, kind of shoving. Well, I got to imagine they go, these guys go into the locker room after all the penalties they had in the first half, and that was the big message preached. Wide back on either side, swing pass to the right side fully, and it's off his fingertips and incomplete. So a penalty yet again helping out the Pirates and pushing back the Blazers. They get him off the field after just one first down on the drive. And yet again, the punting unit will come out for the Blazers. Southwestern had to tell themselves at the back end of the first half is, hey, if we give up a couple of big plays, we're still in these drives. And that's because of the penalties inflicted upon themselves by Bellhaven. And that's kind of how the drive started for them here. The penalty hurts them, and sure enough, Southwestern gets the stop they were looking for. Low snap, right-footed kick is away, slow end over end, fair catch called for and made at the 35-yard line. So that is where the offense will take over for Southwestern, leading 24-7 with 11.29 left to go in the ball game. Garrett Green with you here. Andrew Chapman alongside providing color commentary today. Nathan Hyde, our great producer, and, Meek, and uh, Mickey Holden doing the hard work out there operating the camera. Andrew, you talk about the penalties so far today. That has absolutely been what has hurt uh, these, excuse me, has hurt Bellhaven. Six penalties for 72 yards today. Uh, meanwhile, Southwestern just three penalties for 19. So that has been a massive contributing factor for the Pirates. They'll come out and line up in the I formation. Again, J.J. Slack is in as the quarterback. Pitch goes to Elijah Smith, puts his foot on the ground, spins out of a tackle, and still on his feet. Stiff arms a man at the 35, but is ultimately brought down on the outside edge. Tackle made by the free safety, Seth Gaston, on the play for Bellhaven. Yeah, and in this drive, we might not see Southwestern pass the ball. We might not see them throw the ball for the rest of the game. I mean, they've been so effective on the ground, and now you've put yourself in a spot where you can just run the football, let that clock tick down. You have a three-score lead, so you just keep plugging away. Pirates 44 rushes for 253 yards. They're averaging almost six yards a carry today. Leading 24-7. 10.50 left to go in the ball game. Pitch goes to Richardson, trying to sweep to the far side left, gets a seal block on the outside, spins inside of the 40, and down to the 45-yard line, very close to the first down marker. We'll see where they spot the ball. Looks like he's going to be a yard short, and a player is down on the other side for Bellhaven. Man down on the ground on the far sideline there. And it looks like that is the free safety, Seth Gaston. Everyone will go down to a knee right now as Gaston is being attended to. They'll spot the ball just shy, so it'll be third down and three coming up. But as they attend to Gaston, well, you're going to step aside, but he's very quick to his feet. And that might just be a Charlie horse or something as he's coming off of the field looking like something's just hobbling him on one of his legs. Yeah, a little dead leg, perhaps helmet into the thigh, just missing that thigh pad and... He's walking off gingerly, but quickly. I, don't know. I wouldn't describe that as a walk. That's a, that is a ginger jog, but he's obviously upset as he gets to the sideline, tosses the gloves away. You hate to see that for the senior to come off with an injury, but something he might just have to walk off. Third down and one coming up, though, for the Pirates. Under center slack, out of the eye formation. Takes the snap, pitch, straight ahead, plowing his way. That's time, and it's a two-yard gain for a first down. So Kalon Heim, who it was questionable whether he was going to play in this game or not, has come on in the second half and added a fourth running back to this backfield as the Pirates just continue to pound away with the running game. And I know the Pirates came into this game, of course, with a lot of injury concerns on the offense and the defense. Maybe they weren't expecting to see four different running backs, though, contribute and they have a number of options in the run game after today. Well, they continue to bleed time off the clock. We move under 10 minutes left to go in the ball game. Pirates leading 24 to seven. Snap is back, pitch going to Shaw, trying to get towards the outside edge, gets there and pushes forward across midfield, still on his feet up the sidelines, but he stepped out of bounds at the 45 yard line of the Blazers. So in the Blazer territory for Southwestern, and it looks like, again, we have an injured player on the far sideline. That's the Southwestern sideline. So the Pirates have run consecutive, or three out of their last four plays, towards the far sideline. And with all the bodies and blocking on the outer edge, another player is down 
for Bellhaven. We'll go ahead and step aside for just a moment as they attend to the young man. 9.46 left to go here in the ball game. It's the Pirates 24 and the Blazers 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN. Injured player is up and off of the field. Justin Percy, the right safety, was down for Bellhaven. He comes off, arm dangling at his side. Uh, that's probably a shoulder that's going to be popped back into place. Yeah, I can't imagine that feels very good at all. Give him a towel. He's going to have that pop back in. Second and one. Pitches to Smith. Left side. Pushes across for the first down to the 45 and down to the 43-yard line of the Bellhaven Blazers. So another first down for Southwestern as they continue to churn out yards on the ground here. That was the 48th rush attempt of the day for Southwestern, 273 yards on the ground for the Pirates who, again, were operating out of the shotgun for the entirety of the first half. Now they come out in the second half, they put J.J. Slack under center, they've run out of the eye and they've done it very effectively. First down and 10, snap is back, pitch straight ahead, Heim steps out of a tackle across the 40 down to the 38 yard line. Another chunk yardage gain of six, that was actually Jeremiah Richardson on the play. And it's gonna be another second down and manageable, five yards to go as we're inside and nine minutes to go in the ball game. Now you mentioned those rushing yards, Garrett, so far in this game for Southwestern. They had just 83 in the first half, so you're talking about almost 200 yards of rushing offense in this second half alone. Well, that shows you what they have been able to do against this Blazers defense. Under center, Slack stumbles, still gets the pitch away to Heim, puts his head down, but he's met as he gets just shy of the 35-yard line. Hauled down on the outside edge by Connor Fordham, the 6'1", 260-pound senior out of Weedowee, Alabama. And it's third down and four to go for the Southwestern Pirates. Incredible to see how much the offense has come alive, too. We mentioned it at the top of the broadcast, but just nine combined points over the last two weeks for the Pirates. Today they've put up 24, lead by three scores, and this game is theirs to control. Eight minutes left to go in the ball game. 24-7 lead. Third down and four. Play action. Looking left side. Taking a shot over the middle, and a flag flies as it looks like it's going to be pass interference down the field, trying to hit David Brandenburg. And this might go against Fazy and Locke, the sophomore corner. And we'll see what the foul is, but there was the shot that the Pirates were looking to take. And indeed, it's pass interference. Mark off 15 yards. That'll turn into a first down for Southwestern. So they'll be just outside of the red zone at the 21-yard line. And more so than the speed for Bradenburg, it's his ability to run effective routes, make those cuts and get behind the corners that can lead to the grabbing and then the pass interference. In the first half, Bradenburg was kind of that drive, that, that guy they went to to keep the drive alive. Here in the second half with the rushing game going great, he's the deep threat luxury. Well, again, out of the eye formation. Slack pitches it. Outside, Elijah Smith looking for a lane, but he's brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Can we say it again? Colton Strain. Coming in and making the catch for a loss of a couple on Smith, the sophomore out of Wiley East High School. And it'll be second down and four to go. 51st rushing attempt of the day right there for the Pirates. Compare that to their passing game, which we haven't seen very much of throughout the course of the second half. Nine for 18, though, in the passing game. But again, with Slack out of Liberty Hill, where they like to run that wing T offense, seeing him run this running offense for the Pirates effectively. Pitch goes to Shaw. Stutter steps, tries to get behind his blockers, pushes forward for a couple, but is bottled up. The ball comes out, but the play was blown dead as David Lewis made the tackle 
along with a couple of other guys, most notably Connor Fordham and again Connor Strain. A loss on the play, though, brings up third down and 14, but right now the big thing for the Pirates is they are just eating clock away right now from Bellhaven. They let that clock tick down. You mentioned the passing game, Garrett. They had 15 pass attempts from Coleman Kerr in the first half. Well, you just said, just said nine for 18, so three passes in this second half. That's all they've done. They've changed up the game plan significantly, but the running game's been so effective that it's worked, and it's taken Bellhaven, I think, off guard a little bit. So now third down and 15 to go. Slack fakes the handoff. Pressure coming in his face. Rolls out left. Points down the field. Lobs it. It's caught wide open. Brandenburg into the end zone for the touchdown. 26-yard strike. And the Pirates have blown it open here in the fourth. Defender fell down, and Slack playing backyard football, pointing his receiver down the field, lobs it up there for him, and Brandenburg hauls it in for his third receiving touchdown of the year. Told you, man, this is the Southwestern's version of Taysom Hill. This guy's doing it well. I don't, I don't know if Taysom Hill throws a football as well as J.J. Slack. He, that's a left-handed strike right there, wide open man. He gets his lead guy. And this game's all Pirates. You're just bringing back up Taysom Hill. Can confirm he can throw the football. But J.J. <laughs> Slack, the freshman out of Liberty Hill, he's done it all for Southwestern here in the second half. 6.15 left to go in the ball game. It's now the Pirates 31 and the Blazers 7. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium here in Jackson, Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates all over this one. It was 7-7 at the half. It's 31-7 now with 6.15 left to go in the ball game. 26-yard strike from J.J. Slack to David Brandenburg. And now the kick is away. It's a pooch kick. Near side, fair catch called for and made at the 21-yard line. So Bellhaven will start this one off at the 25 yard line. So for JJ Slack, here in the second half, he has just done what you need him to do to manage this game. Throws for the touchdown there to help out Southwestern. First passing touchdown of the career, of his career for JJ Slack. Also got his first rushing touchdown as well when he punched one in from two yards out earlier in the game. Yeah, he's all over the stat sheets. Made a nice tackle for a loss on special teams. He's Made some blocks as well that won't show up in the stat column. He really has been all over the football game today. So now out of the shotgun, snap is back. McEachern throwing right side. That one's hauled in, but immediately met in the backfield. Hayden Smith blows that play up as it starts. Catch was made by the freshman Nick Lauderdale, but he's brought down for a loss of two. There's no blockers at all. Hayden Smith unguarded. He blew into the backfield. McEachern throwing right side. Asungula towards the sideline. And he hauls it in right at the sideline at the 32-yard line. Working up against Damian Dawson. Give him a pickup of 10. It'll set up third down and two. And that's really been the only target so far in this second half. Asungula that McEachern's been able to find. I think you would have liked to have him a little bit more in the third quarter. But Asungula was working at the QB spot. So now third down and two to go. Inside of five and a half minutes left in the ball game. Southwestern leading 31 to seven over Bellhaven. A dominant second half performance by the Pirates. The quarterback, Hunter McEachern, takes the shotgun snap, waist high, swings it out to Foley. In space, trying to make a bad miss. He's brought down as he just slides over the 35 yard line on the far sideline, right at the numbers. That's good for four yards and a first down for the Blazers. Just their second first down in the second half. Yeah, and Foley, the only guy who's provided Bellhaven any points today. Throw towards the far sideline, and that is caught by Caradine, brought down by Addison Wheeler, the freshman out of Mansfield. Gain of four on the play. 
Brings up second down and six. McEachern working quickly, under pressure, off his back foot, throws one down the field, and that's incomplete, but a flag flies in. Trying to connect with Lauderdale, the coverage on the play was Josiah Minifield, and he's gonna be flagged for pass interference. Yeah, and Minifield, at that point there, all eyes were on the intended receiver, and he was just kind of all up, almost giving him a bear hug as the ball came in, and. Hit him in the back of the helmet, but the receiver had no chance to try and extend and make that play. Well, that's 6-3 against 5-8, so that's what they were trying to capitalize on right there. Bellhaven, and they'll get the 15-yard penalty out of it and move into Southwestern territory. The first time the Bellhaven has been in Pirates territory in the second half. Again, Bellhaven scored the first seven in this game on a 19-yard touchdown by Brad Foley. Since then, 31 unanswered by Southwestern, but it was 7-7 at halftime. Out of the shotgun, McEacher. Sins fully out of the backfield. Now three wide receivers on the short side of the field right. Takes the snap, under pressure. Womack rolling right, and now McEacher will keep it and slide out of the bounds himself. Here, Womack was applying pressure. Looked like he might have been grabbed onto on the outside edge there, but McEachern slides away and picks up six on the play, second down and four. They're trying to keep the pace going on this drive. They know that they're all but out of it at this point, but if you can still try and get a quick score here within maybe a minute or so, then you can try and do something on special teams or get a defensive stop, try and make this thing closer than it is. So th second down and six to go, 4-12 left in the ball game. Southwestern leading 31-17. to Snap is back, Blitz is coming, up the middle, McEachern steps up and has running room across the 30, gets to the outside at the 25-20. One man to beat, it's Minifield, and he brings him down on the outside edge. And a flag comes in late, as that was actually Caleb Richardson, the sophomore safety, who might get flagged for some extracurricular on the end of that run there. Blitz came and McEachern just went right up the middle and followed his blockers down the field. And it's actually going to be an unsportsmanlike, not an unnecessary roughness, but still half the distance to the goal. That's going to make it first down and goal to go for Bellhaven, and they're going to be at the six-yard line. Yeah, as Richardson stepped to his feet, he kind of extended out that right leg, almost looked like a kicking motion, but at the same time, McEachern, I don't know, it looked like he kind of got wrapped up in his arm and was just trying to get that foot loose, but for the official down there, found it to be an unsportsmanlike move. 30-yard rush for McEachern. Brings up first down and goal to go. Out of the shotgun, two men move to the other side of the formation. McEachern takes the snap. Handoff fully, going right side, tripped up at his feet and brought down. Hole clogged on the outside there by the senior linebacker Hayden Smith got around his ankles. And that'll bring up second down and goal, but a player is down for the Blazers over there on the far sideline. So it'll be second down and goal to go from the eight yard line for the Blazers when things get going. Garrett Green with you here, Andrew Chapman is alongside. And Andrew, we'll just take a look at some of these stats here in the second half for Southwestern and overall in the game, 52 rushes for 274 yards, averaging 5.3 a clip. Uh, they're also averaging, averaging 17 and a half yards per reception, 10 receptions for 175 yards. But really the difference in this one, third down efficiency, Southwestern nine for 16 on third downs, converting a better than a 50% clip. Meanwhile, for the Baker, uh, for the, I always want to say Bakerfield Blaze, uh, the Bellhaven Blazers, uh, four for thirteen, and of course penalties, the other big one in this one, seven penalties for eighty-seven yards for Bellhaven in the game. Yeah, five third down conversions coming in the first half for Southwestern, an additional four in the second half. So we said that was the big key stat they needed to continue on, and they did. And overall, the penalties continued as well for Bellhaven and. That's kind of put an end to some of the momentum they had on early drives in the half. Player being taken off the field is the fullback, number 22, Gabe Wilson, a native of South Haven, Mississippi, out of South Haven High School. So he will come off, and it'll be second down and goal to go from the six-yard line for the Blazers. McEachern takes the snap, looking right side, coming on the throw to the end zone. It's knocked, batted, and incomplete. 
trying to go to Carradine on the far sideline. Pressure was in the face from Hayden Smith who was crashing down. And it's an incompletion to bring up third down and goal for Bellhaven. Was able to come down with it, but he was out of bounds and was just bobbling a little bit on the sideline. Someone got in there and got a hand on it, I think, for Southwestern. One of the corners and was just able to break up that play. So now third down and goal to go from the seven yard line. 3.16 left to go in the game. Southwestern leading 31 to seven. But the Blazers knocking on the door. McEachern, one back to his right, takes the snap, looking right side over the middle and it's in and out of the hands of the intended wide receiver, LaMarcus Carradine. It was Caleb Richardson on the breakup there and now on fourth down, trailing 31 to seven. You would imagine that more than likely, Bellhaven's gonna go for it here. Really good bounce back from Caleb Richardson after he was flagged for the unsportsmanlike, coming back after he gave him that additional yardage and getting the pass break up in the end zone that would have put Bellhaven in a spot where they have the touchdown and then they maybe try an onside kick real quick. They're gonna go for it here though. The only way you can try and find yourself back in this thing late is to get a touchdown and then Maybe try it onside. So fourth and goal from the seven yard line. One wide receiver to the far side right, one to the near side left. Snap is back, fade route, back of the end zone battling, and a flag comes in. Flag comes in late. Coverage by Damian Dawson as he got tangled up with Carradine, but really it was Dawson who had the back positioning there, and that's gonna go against Southwestern on a ball that was overthrown towards the back of the end zone and unfortunately it's gonna be first and goal now from the seven down to the three and a half yard line. And that football is probably out of the reach of Carradine even if he does not have Damian Dawson on the ball side. And there was just a little bit of a last second shove from Dawson that I think drew that flag, but overall it was probably an uncatchable football. So first and goal, snap is back. Handoff goes to Asangula instead. It'll be McEachern straight ahead. It'll be marked down shy of the goal line. Thought I heard a whistle on that play before it even got going, but McEachern keeping and diving straight ahead for a gain of maybe a yard. And it brings up second down and goal. 2.45 left to go in the ball game. 31-7 in favor of Southwestern over Bellhaven. Southwestern looking like they're gonna snap a brief two game losing skid and send the Blazers to their fifth loss. McEachern, shotgun, handoff, fully, straight up the middle, slices through towards the goal line and he's in from four yards out for a touchdown. Second touchdown of the day for Brad Foley, sixth rushing touchdown of the year. And the Blazers, after 31 unanswered by the Pirates, get one back. Yeah, Brad Foley, really now a big touchdown machine for Bellhaven. A couple of receiving touchdowns to go along with his rushing total this year, so eight total TDs. And now it'll become a special teams game after this attempt at the extra point. Well, remember, early on, as in right out of halftime as this ball is put up and through and good, and that's gonna make it 31 to 14 as we'll stay here moving towards the final 246 of this one. But remember that right out of the half when Southwestern went under center and really took this Bellhaven defense by surprise, they were eating up chunk yardage, the Blazers had to call a timeout. So with 240 or 226 left to go in the game, Bellhaven's only got two timeouts to use and with as efficient as this Southwestern offense has been, you assume an onside kick is coming, as long as you recover it and get one first down, that, that's gonna be the ball game. Yeah, that's just gonna just about wrap it up for Bellhaven. There was some miscommunication in the first half that led to a pair of burn timeouts, but you said it earlier, Garrett, when that timeout was called early in the second half that they're a lot more valuable, especially once you get into these final couple minutes of the game. Even if you were to recover an onside kick on the offensive side, you want one more touchdown to work with. So for Bellhaven, uh, see how they line up here. Well, they have everyone bunched up on the line. And we get to see how Cade Ganey does on his onside kick. One man is deep, it's Elijah Smith, but you would assume this is gonna be an onside. Running on, 
Here's the kick, and it's a squib right up the middle. That one's going to bounce for a little while, but Smith comes on and falls right on the football. And so the Pirates will take over with 2.26 left to go in the ballgame, leading 31-14. to And again, all they need to do is get one first down, and this ballgame is over. I think the low squib was not what most were expecting on that. I think they were looking for more of the high chopping kick, try and elevate it in the air and have your guys rush and try and high point the football. But they saw some open space down there on the short squib, thought maybe they could try and sprint it out and grab the football. But just a first down should do it. I think you want that squib to die a little bit more. Yeah. So that way you let one of your gunners slide through that initial line of Southwestern defenders. First snap is back, drive ahead right in the middle there as J.J. Slack hangs on to it and goes forward for a couple of yards. Second down, and we'll call it seven to go, and no timeout being used right now for Bellhaven, so Southwestern probably just a couple of rushes, and they will head back to Texas with a victory. Pirates looking to improve to 3-0 and all-time over Bellhaven. Got a 60-31 win over them back in 2017 and a 21-10 win back in Georgetown last year. Under the center, the snap is back, handoff goes, and driven down just as he gets across the 25-yard line. He's the running back in the middle as we get a little bit of a different look right now in for these Pirates. Running the ball up the middle there for Southwestern. Number 23, Brady French, the 5'8", 160-pound junior. And there is the timeout for Bellhaven. So they will take it leading into this third down play. That makes sense. You can't burn the timeout after first down. So you maybe see if you can get an incompletion somewhere and then use them. But again, 31 to 14 in favor right now of Southwestern. So they're looking to get above the 500 mark on the air at 3-2 and two and move back to 500 in conference play. Now it's all about getting healthy if you're Southwestern. You've gone on the road, long road trip, and you're going to come out of here with a convincing win. And that tells you a lot about the football team you have, the guys who have been maybe sitting the first couple of weeks coming out here and making a statement, just like head coach Joe Austin was hoping to see out of his guys. So use the next coming days to try and get as healthy as you can and keep chugging along because well, you've proven you can win under tough circumstances. And now you maybe have a different offensive formula to go with. Snap is back, pitch goes to the outside. Trying to find his way out there is Frenchy and he's going to be brought down shy of the first down mark, but bring the wood down on there. And Brady French right there on the outer edge and he will go out of bounds. That will stop the clock. So not what you're looking for there fourth down now coming up and the clock stops so the Blazers will get it back but it does seem like a tall task 31 to 14 with a minute 33 left to go but didn't want to stop the clock there. Yeah one of those situations where even though you're carrying a pile of blockers you almost just want to allow yourself to try and hit the ground it's the one time where the tacklers may be trying to pull you along a little farther just so he can get you to that sideline and get you out of bounds. So Victor Winfield out to punt for just the fourth time today. Receives it, puts his right foot into it. It's a spiraling kick that'll hit at the 40. Take a little bit of a backspin and be downed right at the 40-yard line. So that is where Bellhaven will come back out, trailing 31-14 to with just a minute 25 left to go in the game. Quick update for you. On the scoreboard from around the ASC, talked about the fact that there are only two other games, only one other game going on right now. Mary Harden Baylor fell behind 7-0. They have recovered. They now lead it 26-14 over East Texas Baptist uh, with 40 seconds left to go in the first half. Of course, coming up next, that's who these Pirates are going to play. They have Mary Harden Baylor back at home in Georgetown. Snap is back, swing pass goes to Foley. Smith is there to meet him in the backfield and drag him down for a loss on the play. And Smith is now, looks like he's calling for assistance as he's down on a knee. And that's not what you want to see late in this game. One of your senior linebackers, who's been an integral part of your defense, don't know what he might have nicked or anything, but he is coming off right now. So Smith off as he heads to the sideline after making the tackle for a loss. Second down and 15 with a minute 10 left to go in the ball game. So again, the story of this one, we were tied at seven at the half 
Southwestern came out, started running out of the I formation and ran to almost 200 yards in the second half alone. McEachern looking to take a shot. Down the field looking for Asun Kunla. That one is over his head. Defense on the play, Josiah Minifield, and it's third and 15. And if you're Minifield, you just try to avoid the pass interference any way you can. You're obviously a little outsized going against the tall length, the Asun Gula. And McEachern has the arm to try and bomb one down the field, and that could be the only hope really in this drive for Bellhaven to try and get something quickly. 51 seconds left to go in the game. Southwestern leading 31 to 14. Three wide receivers far side right, one near side left. McEachern out of the gun, takes the waist high snap. Five step drop, Womack pressuring him, spins, throws, caught, midfield. Across midfield and stepping out of it, Carradine down the sideline to the 10-5 and into the end zone for a touchdown. 65 yard strike, LaMarcus Carradine steps out of a tackle and is into the end zone for a touchdown. So the Blazers do turn that one more possession into points. It's now an 11 point game with the PAT coming and 38 seconds left in the game. Just kind of sidestepped around and around the 30 yard line, found a ton of real estate and then turned on the speed and Carradine full sprint, able to get the big passing play that Bellhaven needed and well, will give them a chance to try an onside kick once again. PAT is good. 21-31 in favor of Southwestern with 38 seconds left to go. One more P8 or one more onside kick coming. By the way, for Carradine, third receiving touchdown of the year for the senior out of Euphora, Mississippi. So we'll see here and now timeouts expired. Excuse me, Bellhaven does have one timeout left, but as long as Southwestern falls on the ball, two knees and this game is over. So you know that we'll have a chance to talk to Joe Austin in the post game, and he won't be happy with that one ending up the way that it is, but look, with the way that Southwestern played in the third quarter and a good chunk of this fourth quarter, uh, you still have to be happy with how this one has turned out so far. Yeah, going into the second half, we kind of came to the assumption that it was either going to be one offense breaking out in the second half that would win the game, or one defense really stepping up, and then maybe we end up with a 10-7 game or a 14-7 <laughs> game. And for Southwestern, it was their offense, their rushing offense especially, that blew it open for over 200 yards and put this thing out of reach. And now, while well, Bellhaven tries to inch back late, you built up such an advantage that you can just try and recover here and kneel this thing down. Hands team is on as this is all set up for Cade Ganey for an onside kick. And here is the onside hit right at the sideline and out of bounds. That's going to be the ball game. Kick out of bounds. Southwestern will get the ball. Toonies will do it. And the Pirates are going to come to Jackson, Mississippi and come away with a third straight victory over the Bellhaven Blazers. So all over but the last two kneels right now. And again, coming up on the postgame show, we'll have a chance to talk with Coach Joe Austin and a couple of players about this one. And Andrew, while we have just a moment to talk about it here, how about the performance by the true freshman out of Liberty Hill? Uh, J.J. Slack coming on, not only doing it with his legs, doing it by operating the offense, but also throwing the ball around a little bit. Yeah, you could give the game ball to... A few different guys today from the Southwestern offense, but maybe none more deserving than J.J. Slack, who's able to kneel it down. Not only did he have a rushing touchdown, first passing touchdown of his career as well, hooking up with David Brandenburg. He was making a tackle on special teams. He was handing off the ball to his, his rushing offense, and, and he was really doing it all along with Devin Shaw and, and Brandenburg today. Knee taken by the Pirates, final 16 seconds. Are going to run off of the clock here, and Southwestern comes to Bellhaven and comes away with a 31 to 21 victory here in Jackson, Mississippi. That is your final score as the Pirates get away from their two-game skid. They might just find a quarterback, their fifth one in five weeks, but he gets it done, and they are able to come away with a 31-21 victory. Coming up on the post-game show, we'll have a conversation with Coach Joe Austin after he addresses the team. We might talk to a couple of players of the game as well, and we'll give you final stats and totals. Southwestern, 31 to 21 winners over Bellhaven. Post-game show comes your way next here on SHN Sports.
Welcome back to Bellhaven Bull Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates get a 31-21 victory over the Bellhaven Blazers. Garrett Green with you. Andrew Chapman is alongside. Nathan Height, our great producer, and Mickey Holden operating the camera today. You get a shot there on our SHN feed of Southwestern meeting on the other side. Victorious. They're now 3-2 and two on the year, and they are they have improved to now 2-2. Two and two and two in conference play as well. We take a look back at this game. Bellhaven struck first. They had one really long drive in this game. Uh, that was Part of it was a 57-yard reception by Brad Foley, ultimately Foley with a 19-yard touchdown run, and that is how Bellhaven got on the board. Southwestern, though, primarily retire, re relying on Coleman Kerr there in the first half. Uh, Kerr did have a good game, the sophomore out of Leakey, Texas, and uh, led them down the field. A big catch by Jeremiah Richardson for 41 yards was part of the scoring drive for the Pirates in the first half uh, as they came away with a four-yard touchdown run by Elijah Smith to tie the game up at seven. The first half did have three missed kicks in it, though. Uh, Southwestern missing a pair of kicks, uh, and then one missed by Bellhaven as well that went off of the upright. So we went to halftime at 7-7. Seven, seven. And then in the second half, Southwestern came out and showed a completely different look than they had in the first half. J.J. Slack, who is listed as the backup quarterback coming into today, he's listed as a wide receiver on the depth chart, the freshman, the fifth quarterback to play for Southwestern this year. He lines up under center. They go to a power eye running formation, not something that's been seen uh, by teams against Southwestern this year, and they did it to immense efficiency. Uh, a great drive down the field, comes away with a field goal right out of the gate. And then you had a rushing touchdown uh, by Devin Shaw to cap off a long drive, and then a receiving touchdown hauled in uh, there on the outside edge by David Brandenburg, part of 31 unanswered points by Southwestern. Now, uh, ultimately, Bellhaven does score a couple of late touchdowns. Uh, you had McEachern getting one on a, a quick slant that was in for a touchdown, and then also you had a 65-yard reception by LaMarcus Carradine that came with less than a minute to go in the ball game, but Southwestern switching things up, uh, and it led to immense success as they get scoring plays in the game uh, from their leaders on offense today. J.J. Slack throwing his first touchdown. Devin Shaw, Elijah Smith, also great contributions by Jeremiah Richardson and Kalon Heim, who we weren't sure was going to play in the ball game today, but he does indeed come away and help Southwestern. We will run down stats for you coming up here in just a few moments. We'll also chat with head coach Joe Austin, victorious today, as Southwestern picks up a 31 to 21 win over Bellhaven. Now three and one, or three and zero oh, all time against the Blazers, and now back to above 500 in the season. We will have stats for you coming up here in just a moment as Southwestern gets the win today. You're listening to Southwestern Pirates Football on SHN Sports. Welcome back to Bellhaven Bowl Stadium here in Jackson, Mississippi. The Southwestern Pirates, 31-21 winners over Bellhaven University. Garrett Green with you. Andrew Chapman is alongside. Nathan Height, our great producer today, and Mickey Holden was on camera. Uh, running down some final numbers from this one today. What a game for Devin Shaw. It was Elijah Smith back in 2017 who had the big game against Bellhaven, part of a 60-31 to win, ran for 96 yards and a touchdown. Well, today it was Shaw, 12 rushes 
for 116 yards and a touchdown. He broke off a 55-yard touchdown run, averaged 9.7 yards a carry. Elijah Smith also had a good day as well, 14 carries for 71 yards and a touchdown. He averaged 5.1 yards a clip. Didn't see as much of him in the second half, but Austin Castaneja, three rushes for 46 yards, a long of 33. And Kalon Hine came in, seven rushes for 26 yards, busted off a 14-yard rush. Uh, Coleman Kerr today was 8 for 15 for 133 yards. Uh, didn't throw, turn the ball over. Meanwhile, J.J. Slack goes 2 for 4 for 42 yards and a touchdown. Uh, on the receiving side of things, David Brandenburg had the big game, six receptions for 108 yards and a touchdown, including a 26-yard strike. Uh, Kasten Yaha had two receptions for 16 yards. Uh, you also had Jeremiah Richardson with a catch for 41 yards. And then Anthony Stevens in the first half had a big reception. It was one catch for 10 yards on the day. As for Bellhaven today, uh, Hunter McEachern did what you ex would expect, 20 for 32 for 249 yards. A touchdown, had a 65-yard strike. Uh, he also ran nine times for 68 yards today. Meanwhile, Brad Foley, 10 rushes for 36 yards. He had two touchdowns. Uh, Mario Asagunla, two rushes for 25 yards on the game. And then Colby Blunt, five rushes for, 20, uh, for 15 yards. Uh, did bust off a 24-yard touchdown run. But again, uh, had a net loss of 11 yards today. Uh, for the receiving side of things, LaMarcus Carradine, six, yard, six receptions for 125 yards and a touchdown. Again, one of those was a 65-yard reception. Asagula, five receptions for 47 yards. Uh, had a long of 17. Brad Foley, four catches for 57 yards. And Colby Blunt, three receptions for 33 yards. Tackling today, Hayden Smith led the way for Southwestern. Six tackles, a six and a half total. Had four and a half tackles for loss for the senior linebacker. Uh, Minifield had six tackles today. Uh, you had Brandenburg had one tackle. Uh, and then Addison Wheeler, four tackles, uh, five or five total tackles, four unassisted, and one tackle for loss. Missing off of the box score as well, another sack for Garrett Womack today as he comes away with a big sack for Southwestern on defense. Well, it is about that time, and uh, we were just talking about the tackles, so Hayden Smith is the man who came away today, having in the box score as uh, six and a half tackles today, four and a half for loss. Hayden, thanks so much for coming up to join us today. Uh, you guys obviously on defense held your own in the first half, but then in the second half uh, really shut down this Bellhaven Blazers defense while the offense was rolling along. What adjustments did you guys make there in the second half to shut them down? Uh, we just kind of came together defense and just said, let's lock it down, guys, and we all just came together and played real hard. We kind of only ran a few plays that, that whole second half, and just did our assignments and played good football. It is amazing how sometimes it, simpler is better for that kind of stuff. But for you today, it was really getting in the backfield for a lot of tackles. Did, did you have a key in for anything, or was it just the three guys up front were creating space and you're able to, to slide in there and make the tackles? Yeah, the three guys up front were making it real easy for me to see the plays that were coming. Um, also, we did great film preparation this week, and I knew a lot of plays that were coming before they even came. So it was nice. How tough is it when you have a guy like McEachern who uh, can step back and really sling the ball over the yard? And today did it a little bit more with his legs. So what was it like going up against him for uh, a third time, really? Uh, that kid's an animal. I mean, every every time he walks on the field, we're like, okay, let's play good de pass defense because that kid can really throw, and we got to give him a lot of respect. Um, and he showed that he can run the ball today, too, and he hurt us pretty bad on a couple plays, so we just had to buckle down and really make sure we're doing our assignments, and that was it. Offense made an adjustment in the second half. How great is that for you guys to be on the sidelines and be staring and watching your offense march out for almost 200 yards rushing there in the second half? Oh, it was so fun. I mean, there was a couple of times where they had such long drives that I felt like I was losing my sweat. <laughs> um, it was so fun to watch those guys run the ball, and um, J.J. Slack coming in as a freshman and, do, and holding it down at quarterback. It was really fun. Um, and the plays were awesome, and just everybody worked together today. It was well, nice Hayden, to watch. everything worked together for you today. Again, six tackles on the day, four and a half for loss. Not a bad day at Thank the you. yard. Thanks so much for dropping by for a few it. minutes. All right, Hayden Smith dropping by to have a conversation with us, the linebacker who was a big piece of it today. We'll continue and roll along from Smith to Shaw, Devin Shaw, with a career day. We'll let him throw on the headset. Uh, and, Devin, you come away with uh, over 100 yards rushing, get into the end zone today. We'll talk to Coach Austin here in just a moment about the adjustment, but what was the conversation like at halftime when it's, hey, 
We know you're lining up in shotgun normally. We're going I formation, under center. We're going four backs, and you're going to be a big piece of it. What was that like at halftime? Yeah, we so it's tied up at halftime. We knew we got to come out and just you know step on the gas pedal and dominate the game. So we came out and showed who the tougher football team was, and that was the plan. And so we came out, and we did it and executed, and everybody did their role. Offense linemen opened up huge holes, and our fullback, Dawson Gonzalez, he led the way, and it was, it was great. You know, that I'm glad that you said that. I don't know if we said Dawson's name very much, but he's the guy who deserves a lot of credit for yes, all that sir. lead blocking there when you're lining up in the I formation. You bust off a 55-yard run today that gets down to the two-yard line and ultimately sets up a touchdown. Walk us through that one because it wasn't just here's the hole. It was out to the sideline, break a couple of tackles, tiptoe down the sidelines. What's What was that run like for you today? Well, I knew the line was going to get in good posi position to get me outside, and then I followed, of course, our fullback through the hole, and then I see it open up like the Red Sea and just ran through it and trusted our blocks and got down there. So I had to do my role whenever I was called. Well, we don't have him here with us, the true freshman, J.J. Slack, coming in. What was it like to be working with him and having him operating the offense and, and leading you guys to such success in the second half? Oh, he did a great job. He stayed composed the whole time through the huddle, called the plays. He knew what he was doing. And uh, even like within our formation there, he's not just – tossing it and watching he's leading and so he had had a good box on a couple runs that opened up uh more lanes for us in the backfield so super proud of jj how awesome. much does that fire you up when your quarterback pitches to you and then he's also lead blocking oh it's awesome because you know he wants he wants some of the action too and if you if this guy's willing to stick his head out for you you know like that's the guy that you want out there and so it makes it a lot more fun out for us Devin Shaw today 12 rushes 116 yards and a touchdown he's dropped by Devin thanks so much partner. thank you sir appreciate it good work today all right and last but not least here on the post game show coach Joe Austin job drops by and chats with us and uh Gets the sweat off of the headset there. Yeah, yeah those guys were sweaty, yeah, so they, give me a second to wipe off. Uh, they, they they certainly did it today. Uh, Coach, really, not uh, not a whole lot of sweating for you in the second half, though. All right, uh, I, and I want to ask you, what led you to the adjustment in the second half to say, look, Kerr has done a good job in the first half. Uh, we normally operate out of the shotgun, but now we're going to move into an eye formation, put your hand on the ground, and push forward. We started working on that three weeks ago <laughs> when we lost – uh, Austin Emery, our season starting quarterback, and then when we lost uh, Coleman, uh, we were like, man, we're going to need to do some things to take pressure off our quarterbacks, and then we lost Landry Gilpin, uh, who was doing our, our base offense stuff, so we've been working on this for a while. We, we, we had to analyze our football team and say, you know, what we normally get from a quarterback position as far as the decision making and ball distribution uh, is probably going to be hard to have for a while, so we started working on it, and it was finally ready this week. You know, you can't, uh, you can't do something before you're ready to do it, and it was a good little surprise to to pop out in the second half. And uh, all the credit to Tom Ross, who's our associate head coach and our co-offensive coordinator, who came in with the idea uh, three weeks ago and said, "Hey, we got to take the pressure off our quarterbacks." But you know what we have? We've got really good fullbacks in uh, Dawson Gonzalez and Devin Shaw. We've got real good tailbacks in Eli Smith and Kalen Heim and Jeremiah Richardson and Devin Shaw played back there also. So, you know, we were going to have to work around those guys. And so we put this formation in and it really fit J.J. Slack's skill set. There's some other guys in our program that are working on it also and they're going to be running it at our JV level. So, you know, we'll see where it goes long term, but it definitely was something that they were not aware, aware of that we were going to have in our arsenal. I mean, J.J. is listed as our number two quarterback and he did, right? He played our base offense in, in the first half. Um, but it was a good uh, – a good adjustment by Coach Ross to, to, to identify what we needed for our team at that time, and then the players executed it really well today. How big is that? Because and, and I've been away from the state of Texas for a couple of years, but unless things have changed uh, seismically, Liberty Hill still runs a, a wing T offense there, if I'm not mistaken, correct? And that's where J.J. came from. So how important was it for him to be familiar with that similar kind of concept, and that's why you guys decided to go with him instead of maybe someone else uh, like, like you know, Moore who is out of Stephenville, where, again, I'm assuming they probably still run something similar to what Art Bryles used to run there in a big widespread open offense. Well, it certainly fit. It certainly fits JJ. But JJ can can do so many things. He covers kickoffs. He covers punts. He, he's on all of our special teams on our punt team. Um, you know, he makes tackles on on all kinds of things. But he also can can run this under center offense. And Devin Shaw described it real well as a lot of times JJ takes a snap and pitches it and goes and blocks. <laughs> so it's an eleven man attacking offense. It's not your eye formation where the quarterback reverses out, hands it off, and watches. Uh, this is a little bit different deal. 
Uh, and it does fit J.J. really well with what he had done in high school. But, you know, the main thing was beyond it fitting J.J. is it's where we were with our football team, and we needed to be able to rely on our running backs and de-emphasize uh, being so dependent on our quarterbacks because we were getting really thin for a while. Well, uh, taking a look to the other side of the ball, because, look, the offense is going to grab the headlines from this one when you rattle off 31 unanswered points and you, you unveil a giant, really seismic shift for your offense that catches the other team off guard. But how about the defense in the second half? I mean, uh, and especially after right there, Bellhaven is inside of the five-yard line. You pin them back, you get them to where they get back to the one, and that sets mm -hmm. up another touchdown. How big was it for your defense today with the way that they played? Our defense did awesome. And when Coach Kriesel talked to the defense before the game, he said, hey, our best players have to be our best football players. And I think you saw Hayden Smith do that, four and a half tackles for a loss. Um, you know, Nick Smith and, and Garrett Womack, our defensive ends, did a fantastic job because uh, we had five freshmen out there. And uh, it, was, it was hard. You know, it's hard to play with five freshmen. Uh, but they did a good job. I mean, I think, you know, you can say the offense is a story, but I think, you know, playing a game with five freshmen on defense and winning a college football game, that's a pretty big story, too. They did really well. They did indeed. All right. Well, uh, don't want to make you look too forward too early, but uh, Mary Harden Baylor coming up next week. At, they're at home. What's the, what's the mood going to be like now getting ready for that? Well, you know, we're, we're going to be feeling a lot better, obviously. A, a two-game skid, um, you know, this kind of can normalize things. Guys can feel a little bit better. Uh, every, you know, winning, winning fixes a lot of stuff, but they're the best team in the country. They're number one scoring offense. Um, you know, their defense might be number one scoring defense. Uh, they're really good, so we're going to have a very narrow uh, margin for error in that game. I think it's a game that, you know, if we play 100 times, we might win one or two. I mean, we probably have a one or two percent chance, but there's a chance. There is we always a chance. We just have to play well. We'll have to play really clean. We'll have to take care of the football. So, um, you know, our guys are going to give them their best effort. What I like today, and, of course, the game was very much at doubt at halftime. We had great energy before the game. And at halftime at 7-7, seven to seven, we had the same amount of energy. I mean, our guys were just down for the task of uh, giving it whatever we had to give today. So no matter how things get going next Saturday against the best team in the country, if we play with that energy, um, you know, we'll be set up well for the second half of the season. Well, Coach, I can tell you from my experiences with minor league baseball, it's it's a little different for us. It's normally getaway day to finish off a series. But after a win, that, that seven, eight-hour bus ride to get back wherever yeah, you're going be ten. becomes a, comes a lot easier, yeah, though. You when You can't get through Dallas, and you just can't get through Waco. Well, I mean. you're going to be heading back that way with a win <laughs> in your pocket we and uh, a great performance today. Coach, thanks so much for dropping by. Yeah, thank you, minutes. and thanks for filling in with us. You know, Rob Hip says you're awesome, so we appreciate that you were local and able to help us with our broadcast. I'm well, sure our sorry, I'm sure our fans and our parents and everyone appreciates you being able to do it, and Nathan for coming on the trip, and Mickey. So thank you, Mickey. She can see me out the window. So thanks for all that to all the SHN folks. I know. Thank you, Coach. We appreciate everything that you do for us. You make our jobs easy. All right, Coach Joe Austin dropping by to have a conversation with us after the Bellhaven Blazers fall to the Southwestern Pirates, 31 to 21. Southwestern now three and two on the year. Two and two as I'm rejoined by my broadcast partner, Andrew Chapman. Andrew, we just stepped in for a single game, but mm -hmm. just your thoughts on what you saw today out of out of this Southwestern team. Well, if you came in and you had no idea that this was an injury depleted football team, you'd see a lot a team with a lot of heart out there and quite frankly a lot of leaders and talent out there that can help make big plays and guys who are willing to step up in whatever situation they're asked. You know, we, we, we talked to a couple of the big guys today and and uh, and Hayden Smith and along with the the big rusher Devin Shaw, the senior who is tremendous today and on both sides of the ball uh, there were big time contributions and I think what you know Joe Austin just said and going in there at halftime 7-7 seven, seven game we thought it was either going to be a, a big offensive push in the second half by someone or one of the defenses shutting someone down well Southwestern got not only the offensive rushing push and then they also got the defense stepping up as well so it was a perfect formula to to win a ball game in a second half when to use a baseball term you were tied zip zip in a brand new game going into the second half yep. you know so uh Southwestern was was really tremendous today and uh you know it'll hopefully put them in the right mindset to take on a really tough club uh, next week well Southwestern improves to three and two on the year they're two and two in ASC play uh, they snap a two-game losing skid as for Bellhaven 
Houston. They dropped to 1-5 and five on the year. They are now 1-2 and two in conference play. Next up for Southwestern, they do have Mary Harden Baylor coming up next Saturday. That's going to be there in Georgetown. Pack out the house and see what they've gotten. As for Bellhaven, they are going to be on the road to take on Harden Simmons before a bye week. Uh, well, final thoughts for this one. Uh, just want to say a big thanks to my broadcast partner, Andrew Chapman. For those of you who might not know, Andrew and I were the broadcasting team this year for the AA affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers down in Biloxi. I had obviously worked with SHN, but when they asked if I had someone to fill in with me, I couldn't think of anybody better. He is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Andrew, thanks for coming <laughs> Enjoyed along. Enjoyed it. Sir. Thanks a lot for having me. Big thanks as well to Nathan Height. He's going to be on that 10-hour bus ride back to Georgetown tonight. Nathan, thanks so much for coming and setting everything up and making this a real easy process for us. And of course, Mickey Holden operating the camera today. She was the one who was out in the sun. Did a great job for us. Mickey, thank you so much. It was great to work with you today, bringing a crystal clear feed to everyone out there. Uh, as we always like to say to end our broadcast, though, the biggest thanks goes out to all of you who made us a part of your Saturday. Whether you tuned in for a quarter or caught us for the entire game or maybe just a play or two, uh, we're thrilled that you made Southwestern Pirates football any part of your day. So, for Nathan Height, for Mickey Holden, for my broadcast partner, Andrew Chapman, I'm Garrett Green signing off from here at Bellhaven Bowl Stadium. Your final score, the Southwestern Pirates 31, the Bellhaven Blazers 21. Next week, it's Mary Harden Baylor back in Georgetown. We will see you then. Until then, good afternoon from the capital of Mississippi.